eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to Thursday Night Life Fly Tying, the show where passion for fly fishing meets creativity and camaraderie. It's our sixth season, and we're thrilled to have you with us. Without all of you who purchased Season 6 kits and our fantastic sponsors, we wouldn't be able to keep going. So for this, we want to start with a huge thank you, Morning View Mercantile, Lyle Peterman Real Estate, Craft Bear Nation, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, Shore Fishing, Fish Bond, Fly Fusion, and Friesen Brothers. Born in a humble brewery in 2018, our journey began with a simple idea to bring together like-minded souls for an evening of stories, laughter, and the art of fly tying. Our doors were always open, our hearts always welcoming. When the tides of time brought challenges, we evolved from a cozy corner in a brewery to screens across the world, Thursday Night Life Fly Tying transformed into a virtual stage, forging the unbreakable TNL fam. Every Thursday, join our hosts, the ever-entertaining Dana and the skilled artisan Tim, as they weave magic with their stories and skills. Dana brings the laughter, and Tim brings the craft. Tonight, as always, we tie two unique patterns, celebrate our wins, and share a toast with our favorite beverage from our friends at Craft Beer Nation. Stay tuned for surprises, fly and go and prizes, and above all, the love that binds the TNL fam. Let's dive into the world of fly tying together. Tim? What's happening, folks? Where, where are you? I can hear you. Oh, I am, uh, I'm not going to make it in tonight. So, it's Thursday at 7 p.m. Well, it's, it's actually 3 o'clock p.m. where I'm at. So, you got four hours your time to get here? I can't... You're kind of breaking up. So yeah, what are you no, trying to tell me? You were not showing up tonight? Sorry, I'm not. I'm a, I'm a little ways away. What are we what are we going to do? Like so, oh, I'm just Tim, just going on a vacation and uh the folks are all showed up <laughs> Thursday at 7 like they do every week and you're kind of a uh, an important piece here. I'm looking over there, you're not there. I got all your stuff set up for you, and uh, I can't do both. I can't do both. I can't tie the flies, run the show, and uh, at the same time, look for you. Well, we might might have to reach into the reserves. Why don't you just, why don't you just be honest with me? <laughs> I'm on holidays, bro. I'm so, in a beautiful place. 
I just want to know what would happen if I was on holidays. Uh, nothing would happen. Everybody would have to wait for you to get back. <laughs> well, well, I guess I guess the point I'm trying to prove to you is that uh, six years ago when we started the show, I knew that this time would come where you just got too big for the show. And uh, I haven't told you uh, about it. it. I haven't told you about it. Uh, but I've been working on a fly tires bullpen. Ooh. That's not you know a bad that, option. You know what that means? It's not basketball. It's baseball. So essentially, what that means, Tim, in the <laughs> in the sport, is that there, there's a place where people are waiting and warming up and waiting for their opportunity uh, to be a part of something like this. And I think you not being here, whatever your reasoning is, I'm gonna have to dip into the bullpen. Well, you got to do what you got to do. All right. Hang on. You know how they do? They call the bullpen. And uh, I don't even it? know if what the phone I don't even know if the phone still works in the bullpen. Uh, but I'm just going to give the bullpen a ring here and see if uh call the bullpen. 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 Probably doesn't even work anymore. TNL bullpen, is this a joke or something or what? Hey, bullpen. Uh, no, it's Dana here from TNL and and, oh. and sort of Tim. Uh, he's on about one frame per minute uh, video, his video stream. Well, it's just been like a vacation in this bullpen for like six years, you know. So we're just sitting back and got the Hawaii shirt on and kicking back and we're reading a little fly fusion here. And you know why? What's up? What's going on? Oh, hey there, bullpen. Uh, yeah, we're just wondering if uh, what you're doing tonight. Hang on. I think my phone was a little dusty. <laughs> Sorry, can you run that again? I said, you know, like I feel really bad, but what are you doing tonight? Are you saying that you need someone from the bullpen? Well, when you say it like that, yes, I do. I need someone. Well, the bullpen is ready to go, my friend. Wait, wait. I just need to know, like, have you tied a fly in six years? Because I do remember you from episode one. You showed up at the brewery, and maybe you were just showing up because you were waiting for this moment. Well, there is the fly tying table over here, but it is still, it's a little dusty. But it's been uh, worked on a little bit, the last little bit here. All right. Well, what I'm going to need you to do is uh, any chance you've ever tied a Relux Minnow or a Clouser Minnow? Oh, those are my two favorite minnow patterns. Well, then you sound like the guy for the deed. So if you get a chance, um, can you come? Can you get here? We're going to need you in a timely matter. I can BS with the guys for like 20 minutes. That's not a, that's not true. I can BS for about two and a half hours. Uh, but I'll be probably, there in like it's 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Should I go to commercial? I'm like, I'm like coming now. This is what I've been waiting for. Put me in, coach. This is your moment. Here we go. Oh, wow. He's literally not even there anymore. He really, he's really coming. In the heart of nature, when hunger strikes, and time is of the essence. Morning View Mercantile has the solution. Witness how we redefine convenience. It's not just a meal, it's an experience. In mere moments, a feast emerges. Delight in the flavors of the wilderness. Morning View Mercantile, your partner in adventure, your ally in taste. For every adventure, a memorable meal. Morning View Mercantile, where every bite is an expedition. Being up in, up in the, high, the high Rockies or up in that area, the just the different species, right? Um, still looking to get a brookie under the belt, still looking to get a, a bull under the, under the belt, but uh, you know, the fish, the fish are amazing. Um, and just the, the landscape is, is second to none.
What's happening, folks? We've got the bullpen and we've got the couch friends. And if you don't know who that is, well, why don't you just ask? Because I'm pretty sure a lot of people do know who they are and they do know who you are. Here we are. Been waiting six years in the bullpen for this moment. In the making. Let me tell you. Who would have thought? this moment. Who would have thought? Go back to 2018, that winter. Well, folks. That right there is Claude and Colleen. Claude. Mr. Claude. 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 Yes. Claude. C L O O D. Claude. Claude. <laughs> Claude. Mr. Claude. Is it because you're French, Claude? Half. <laughs> half. <laughs> Which half? The top or the bottom? <laughs> or the left side. Oh, okay. All right. So are you right handed or left handed? <laughs> Not going to answer that. <laughs> well, that right there is Mr. and Mrs. Morning View Mercantile. Oh, the best. I think we can all agree that is them in all their glory. So uh, what I wanted to do with them, because they're not quite newlyweds in a couple months, I was going to play the newlywed game. Oh, I love the newlywed game. So Uh-oh. I was going to get them to write down uh, some answers to some questions that I come up with. They did not know that this was going to well, happen. This is typical Dana uh, style but I told, going on right I told now. Claude, I said, hey, I don't want you to stress. This is a stress-free zone. Uh, we won't do anything crazy like that. So I kiboshed it. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Yeah, but, oh, I was really looking forward to that. But you know? if everybody really pushes hard enough, I'm sure uh, we can come back to it. Figure it out. I think I got a few questions ready to go. All right. Well, we'll work on that. I'll work on some pen and paper and uh, get them to answer those questions. And we can see how well they really know each other. <laughs> Guys, my keyboard's dying. Uh oh. Where are the batteries? Of everything I forgot. Well, anyways, we pieced out on Tim. I don't know where he went down a gondola or something, but. Uh, I don't know, but there's He's been a lot here. of meat pies going on over there lately. Have you noticed? Oh, well, that is what they do in New Zealand. That's the thing, eh? That is the thing. So well, let us know where you're from. Let us know. Uh, was there anyone else in the bullpen? That's it, man. What's That's it all. like in there? It looked really cool. It's uh, it's a vacation in there. Yeah. You know? Apparently. You sit back and apparently we're, enjoy. We're and all, <laughs> we're all dressed Dion up like vacation mode because apparently... Everyone's on vacation everyone's right now. Everyone's on vacation and uh, let us know. What are you drinking? Where are you from? I'll tell you what. Craft Beer Nation uh, hooks us up again. And what's really cool about that is we kind of get to try a bunch of different beers every single week. We get to give you guys an unadulterated... Does that work for this? Yeah, that works Review. For this. Review. Um, because we're far from adults, so it's not an adult review. And uh, so what am I drinking? Well, I'm going to tell you. It is called a... From Omen, Omen Brewing. It is a blueberry session ale. Interesting because I've had some like session ales, but not blueberry. That sounds very vacation y right there. Fresh, right? I went for it because it's fresh. I'm trying to think of the session ales that I had before, and I think maybe like an orange flavor or something. Does anybody know anything about session ales? I haven't had that one. Well, what are you going to drink? Tell the fine folks. Well, let's see what you pulled out of the fridge here. It looks like Uh-oh. a peach cream ale from Tin Whistle. Tin Whistle. Tin Whistle. Okay, so what we do not is Tim, we... Not Tim Whistle. Tin Tim's Whistle. whistle. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's something to wet if you're in New Zealand. So what we're going to do, we're just try, we're gonna try these beers, and we're just going to give you our first open... And sometimes unbiased, not favored, unbiased. not favored by uh, Mr. Rutherford, but uh, honest reviews. Honest. He he likes the honest reviews. <coughs> well, and Dana Claude's got one of uh, no, Craft Beer don't, Nation's don't. beers too. What's he drinking? It's from Eighty Eight Brewing Company, and it's a orange chocolate stout. Orange cherry. Orange cherry. No, Terry chocolate oh. orange stout. And your reviews? Have you been drinking it? Yes. Um, Talk to us about it. Actually, I like it. It's a little strong. It's uh, running around eight percent. Okay. Um, but it's uh, it has a nice soft chocolate taste. 
It's yeah. not overpowering, and it's and well, I'm a stout fan, so it fits right in there. And I just want to know what the difference between soft chocolate and hard chocolate is. <laughs> <laughs> it's this is a nice has a nice melty feel in your mouth. <laughs> melty feel. Oh, wow. That he's was, gonna he's gonna fit in great around here. That was a great beer sommelier <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. rendition of what that beer is like. Yeah. Question is, would you put it in your kegerator? Oh, that's a good point. Probably not. The answer is no. <laughs> if you got to think about it, he ain't yeah. filling up a whole it's, keg. It's got a little bit of a sweetness to it, and um, I like mine a little maltier. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm about to try this. Give yours a review if you've if you drank it. Drink oh, it. This Drink is, it. Drink this it. Has got, this has got Kelowna Beach Party written all over it. Why? Like from the peach, peach fest oh peach the peach, how the peach is from peach land how does the peach hit soft or hard claude wants to know <laughs> this is that nice like that medium firmness peach and it just oh it just goes down beautiful it's actually this is this is a great like probably a 10 30 a.m beer oh camping well it's 10 30 it was something like that somewhere time. yeah so I think he's like a whole day ahead of us, so he probably knows how the show goes and how the show ends. But we don't. So, uh, Drayton Goodhope, what's going on? I'm going to give you my review here. I just need another drink because the first one was interesting. It hit a little different. That's that blueberry. Oh, yeah, you got to smack. Smack and bring in some air. Oh, get that palate going. There it is. All right. It's okay. It's okay. At first, it's kind of a little bit blueberry, fruity, nutty, and then it kind of the aftertaste is a is is a little different. A little different. It's not bad. It's not uh, fingernail polish remover. It's okay. It's okay. Not like a couple of weeks ago. Definitely couldn't drink two of these in a row. A um, little bit stronger of a taste, but I think it's okay. It's okay. Does that review work for you? That, that's okay. a great review. I'm enjoying it. All that. right. I will continue to drink it. Let us know in the comments again, because now I'm going to get back to these comments and say, Dusty Barnes. Let's see who's all in the house tonight. Bags is here. Yeah. Jacques Heru. Any good beer in the bullpen? There, was the bullpen dry? The bullpen is dry. Like it's oh, okay. way. When I ask a it's, question, it's way better now. See, look, yeah. Tim. Now Tim's commenting in here. My yeah. connection was crummy. Sorry, your your faithfulness is crummy. Sorry, your dedication is crummy. What else is crummy? I don't know. It's just like, guys got to go on vacation, I guess, yeah, right? I, I mean, I'm kind of happy because I'm here right now. Yeah, you got pulled out of the bullpen. And this is like the real life Truman Show now going on. Like, I yeah. am Jim Carrey in the Truman Show, right? Like, you, you could be. I've just discovered that, hey, I'm on you're, this side. You're being watched. In You're in the show now when you used to be a commenter. Uh, we got a couple, we got three first timers. Well, you've been here in your uh, band days. Well, there were some bad days. Yeah. You were you were uh, really loud on your mic. I remember the band. The band split right now. The band is on vacation. But I'm I'm itching for the band to get back together. Ah, uh, yeah. So Mr. Pape is on YouTube for the first time, and he loves it apparently. And he's uh, checking in from Sacramento. Uh, Chaz is in the house. Gavin Jones, Sailor's Delight, Coffee Kelp Porter from the Best of Kin. Yes, and that was uh, a brewery in Calgary that I'm getting down to to check them out because I've heard good things about them. Um, how is that Sailor's Delight? All right, Tim left his shirt behind for Aaron. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. Would have blown that one apart. Uh, Johnny is I'm nails. actually using Chaz, uh, clips to keep it together. Harry Nipple. Band needs to get back together. Arctic Grayling is here. Guys, this show is about is about interaction. So the more you interact, the more we just kind of go from there. We are going to tie a couple flies tonight. By we, I mean Aaron. We're going to do our best. To We're going to do our flies. best. <laughs> and just remember the quick ties. Uh, we'll be live about 930. So if all else goes south, that's fine too. 
if there's always the quick ties. That's what I've always been telling myself for the last, you know, six years. Six years. <laughs> when you've always been the, the qu- there's always Tim's quick ties, which are immaculate and perfect bullpen. every single time. Well, they're so. actually not, but the one we post <laughs> tends to be better than not. <laughs> That's a fact. Uh, Mr. McKenna, I'm at Trout Fest in New Bronzefells, Texas. No time, but we'll catch the wick tie. Windy cold night in New Hampshire. Two fingers and a cube using Jameson. Screw the beer. Is he actually screwing beer tonight? I guess it's just a straight up kind of night. It's a straight up kind of night. We got into the moonshine a little earlier. There was so much going on. We got fresh prizes uh, for you guys, so make sure that you get your fly and go cards. Cam Wolnoff is off working in the state of New York City. That's not a state, but the state of New York is, and the city is in the city. Uh, we also picked up some Booze Brothers Moonshine Raspberry Lemonade from our friends up at Craft Beer Nation. That thing's got a kick. <laughs> like, that takes the edge off, let me tell you. Like, that's the hardest lemonade. It is oh, yummy. Yeah. Yummy. Yeah. That'll put hair on the chest. All right. Uncle A.A. Ron, there it is. There we are. Mr. Plubui. Plubui. I'll never not call him that. Mr. Plubui. Did you uh, see there was a first timer, too? Where's that? I miss that. I miss that. I Gotta like go up a bit. Right there. Robin Rhodes, welcome. We appreciate round of clicks, round of clicks, everybody. Round of clicks for the new people, Miss Mister, Mrs. Robin Rhodes. Um, I get that all the time because I'm Dana, and you're Aaron. That's right. That's the way it is. That's just the way it goes. That's the way it goes when Look, it goes that way. Chaz is already wishing bad thoughts. Yeah, well, Chaz is going to be up in three weeks, and he's going to be in the bullpen. <laughs> we never know what the bullpen's going to look like in right. three weeks, but that's how it goes. So if you want to get on the couch, you got to let us know, because next week we've already got the couch full Woo-hoo. of good people. Of good people. And one thing we keep forgetting to mention is that Morning View Mercantile drops off the giveaways, and they always leave a package for the couch people. And except you know, no one's, for tonight. Except, well, they are the couch people. They are. <laughs> They're going to have all the packages that they want. You know what I'm saying? But did you look in your package? Because I looked in my package. Yeah. And it's like, it it's, following, <laughs> it's following the theme night tonight. It's full on vacation. Yeah, so one thing, uh, I, which I believe is not for sale yet, or is just starting to get for sale, or... It'll be on the shelves in the next couple of weeks, here. All right, is this, it's called, why don't you talk about it? All righty, that is the Merck Mixology. This is our new cocktail mixes that we're going to have out. So it's freeze-dried fruit, etc. in the jar, and then you add your alcohol to the jar. Do you want the one that's mixed, Dana? Yeah. That's gonna be great. This one's got a bunch of fruit, berries, and vodka in it, and you let it sit overnight, and then it's ready to drink the next day. Yummy! That's what I'm drinking tonight. And so all of that is freeze-dried goods in there. All of it is and, freeze-dried stuff in there. And you all betcha. the stuff in there, is stuff that you guys also sell. Yes. Okay. Wow! Look at that. Hundred percent. So you could get the package for the put vodka. together. Yeah, except for the vodka, Claude said. Oh, yeah, except yeah. for the vodka. That that we don't sell. Uh, it says here, test occasionally for the flavor that you prefer. Strain and discard fruit. Use one or two ounces of flavored liquor, liquor and top with club soda or tonic. Also excellent in mixed cocktails. Which there's some recipes for on that tag on the side. Oh, man, this, this is worth its weight in gold because... It's full of citrus berry collins or a berry citrus cosmopolitan. Wow. There's That's a ton just... of other stuff you could do with it, too. Mine is just the citrus and berry vodka with tonic water, which wow. is my favorite way to drink it. Just cut, Love cut it. that sauce a bit like we should have done with the uh, raspberry lemonade. I don't know, but there's just a lot of jars in this room. Right yeah. A whiskey like, in a jar. Oh. Like it's a lot of jar booze hanging out yeah. in here right now. Oh, well, there's some cans. There's well, some cans. there is, but 
I don't know. Oh, well, 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 well. So I guess the fact of the matter is if you're going to have a drink, you're going to need some snacks. And this week, the baking cam, which is always brought to you by our friends at Friesen Brothers, is just that. A little bit of a snackaroo. Oh, look at that charcuterie right there. Yeah. Um, oh, that wasn't supposed to be up. This video was supposed to be up. Where did the video go? Apparently here. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. Wait, start this video over. That's Okay, guys, that's how it was supposed to start with some Banja's Smokehouse Garlic Sausage Ring. Uh, that's made by Friesen Brothers and some original pepperoni. Um, and then we've got another sausage ring here and some smoked Gouda and some Klondike Gruyere. And so that's right out of uh, Silver, Sylvan Star. And they're in Sylvan Lake, I believe, is, is where they're at. So apparently the guy that started this, what I was told, is actually from the town of Gouda. Like the town. Yeah. Wow. And so uh, over here has a uh, dairy farm and a cheese factory or whatever they're called and, and makes them right there. Local. Another great local place. Such good cheese. I yeah. don't like as a yeah. cheese lover, that would could be dangerous, like growing up there, you know? I know. Like real What dangerous. if you were growing up there and you were lactose intolerant? <laughs> I think that'd be a lot of toilet paper. They would paper still bill. blame you for global warming <laughs> with your methane exposure. <laughs> Not the cows anymore. <laughs> Love the Friesen brothers. Oh <laughs> yes. You're gonna need to get them on the shelf at Craft Beer Nation. These is what he's talking about right here because that is that is a great hand in hand. And uh Dave, had you let me get the gin yesterday? Um what have I been perfect? It, it would be perfect. the full but meal deal the right there. Shine. That the is shine. a fantastic idea, Dave. We will talk. Uh Roger Beatty said, charcuterie is French for I ain't got no bread. <laughs> we cannot make these sandwiches, so uh, eat them from the inside out. <laughs> we got to steal that one from Roger. That's got to go in the joke book. Yeah. yeah. Where's Bad Joke Doug when you need him? That's he's, right. He's brewing up a, a dirty joke. Okay. So now we've done that. We've checked out the baking cam, and we're going to... This time, because it's in the studio, last week I forgot to uh, eat the sausages. Right. Um, yeah. So we're going to make sure we eat them. Oh, but without much further ado, we're going to check over to the new scene because we got some important information for you guys. Entertainment what? news. No. All right, all right. Here we are. What's up on the news docket? Well, first and foremost, you're going to have to get your packages out, which we're on episode seven. That's so right. tonight you're going to have in there the Clouser Minnow and the Crelix Minnow. Right inside <laughs> this kit right here is going to be your episode yeah. seven, Clouser and Crelix. Yeah, and so what's important to note with the Crelix is this the the Crelix flash material. Oh, it's fun. Uh, it's gonna take a bit of work for you to get it out of your package. Fun. So I highly recommend while we're at it uh, to do it and get it laid out. Uh, you can't see how Aaron has it. No, but what but, I can say though is it was just as much fun putting it in as taking it out. That's a good point. Into that package. That's a good point. Um, so now you get to have fun of taking it out. That's right. And what I encourage you is we gave you these material trays to put. Uh, you can put all your materials. The Crelix ain't going to fit on there. Uh, the reason it's called a Crelix Minnow is because the uh, material is called Crelix Flash. It's also tied with a bunch of other different kind of flashes. And I believe uh, TechStream has one. There's Crinkle Flash. There's a whole bunch of others, but like this Crelix and Crenex are really great materials to tie this. I fly. think the Crenex was the original stuff for it, wasn't it? I don't know. I. And then it's maybe they would have called it the Crenex minnow. I don't know, but anyways. Anyways, I think it was something it's I read. Easy I to could tie. be wrong. Both flies are, are pretty fun to tie. They're like pretty easy to tie. Probably some of the two. Um, 
the minnow patterns that have caught the most species of fish, I would think, out there. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, so having said that, we're going to get out uh, tonight's flies. So first one we got there on uh, on your left is the... Uh, the Clouser Mineral by our good friend Bob Clouser. And as you can see there, yeah, UTC 140. That's going to be our go to thread for tonight. And then on the right side, we've got the Creelix uh, Minnow. The Creelix Minnow. And we're going to tie down UTC 140 as well. That way, we're not doing any bobbin changes, anything like that, keeping it easy. And uh, that's tied and invented by our good friend Chuck Kraft that came up with that. Yeah, and Mr. Augustin would like to remind us that the fact of the matter was, Kreenix did come first. There we go. It's a gentleman. Kreenix is a gentleman. Oh. Or is it? I don't know. We're well, going to have to refer to Google on that one. Well, I'm, not, Kre- I'm not Kreenix, up on that one. Kreenix came first, so is it Kreenix a gentleman? The answer's no, Aaron. I don't know. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sometimes he doesn't pick up, but I lay down. No, I don't always clue into those, right. uh, those subtle ones. <laughs> You'll get them. You'll get them. Don't worry. It's only my first night out of <laughs> open, and it's been night six, night years. It. It's six, six years. Six years. Prove yourself, or you're going back in. <laughs> <laughs> I will it tie. Is. I will tie next week's flies with my feet. You I'll did be see how here. comfy it is in there. I I know it's it's enormous <laughs> by the looks of it. It's enormous. All right, let's head into a little bit of, uh, I want to change the vibe here. We're going to make some Bob Ross vibes. Ooh. Those are tonight's flies. The Bob Ross. It's another thing we do here weekly. We play Flyingo. Tell everybody what happens on Flyingo. Oh, Flyingo. The greatest game there is out there on the internet. Yeah, why is that? Why is it so great? Just all these beautiful flies that you can take your bingo dabber on or your finger on your phone to mark off your nice line that you get. Yeah, it's not a line tonight. What are we doing tonight? Do we even know yet? You have to wait and find out. But okay. the bingo cards, the flango cards are free. They are free. And uh, Shren- Shrenson wants me, he wants to pay me to tie with my feet. <laughs> I think, I think, I think what he wants is access to my OnlyFans. fans. <laughs> I just show up and tie with my feet. Nobody the, said th- the nobody D- said they have to work out. The DL <laughs> foot finder. I just, I just tie. DL <laughs> foot finder. That's a good one, the man. The old the old twisted men that, that tune in <laughs> <laughs> weekly. <laughs> Whether it's my feet or the skills I have with my feet, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. But they're tuning in. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Where were we about bingo? No, get you, you got to get in character. Okay. Okay. You got to stay in character as long as you can. All right. If the song, if the tempo sure. changes, we change. But I don't think it's going to change. I think it's going to stay right where it's at. Tonight's flies, flying go. Download your bingo card, also known as flying go. Okay. All right. So I don't want any excuses when everyone shows up and they don't have a flying go card. I want. I want results. I don't want excuses. We want those nice, happy bingo cards. I want those too. happy flying go cards everywhere. Everybody's going to have one in their hand on their phone. That's Maybe right. you get two if you're Sean Ellison. How many that's, emails are you allowed okay. to have well, for that? Sean breaks oh, the record same. at 47. 47 emails for flying yeah. go. That's the last we're going to talk to you about flying go. That's it. What we have up next here is our good friends at Rock and Fly Shop have a little something for us. Is this the prizes for tonight? The giveaway? No. No oh, giveaways. We show those. We show those all later. Rock and Mountain Fly Shop's gonna have open house fly tie next week. And um, they're gonna bring that to you from their fly shop. Seven PM to nine or so. Most likely doors will open around six. That There's a high probability craft beer nation will be well represented there. Some cold, cold, frosty beverages from our friends, Craft Beer Nation. Also remember that the place to buy your Morning View Mercantile stuff is at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. So the best thing you could do to yourself right now is head over to RockyMountFlyShop.net. The website's below. Scroll in just casually across the bottom. 
and go buy yourself some Monty V merch and mercantile stuff, you know? Fill up the cart. And then and then what's the I of four pancake party? Oh this is the weekend that we've all been waiting for. Dreams come true. Saturday March twenty third. March twenty third. Something like that. Old is hosting. Yeah. Once again. The Fly Fusion I F four. Stay in character. Put you back in the bullpen. <laughs> the Fly Fusion I F four. Yeah. Film Festival. I-F4. And at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop to yeah, start, start the early. beautiful morning off. There will be campfire coffee. Fluffy, fluffy pancakes from Friesen Brothers. Oh yeah. And all the and, bacon uh, and sausage you might want. Yeah, tell your heart. Your heart's desire. And after that, then you're gonna do what? You're gonna, you're gonna, you're just wait. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Right yeah. I like, I like the tenacity you're bringing tonight. I'm working on it. I'm working. And I, I love it. Just remember, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop next week. Open house fly time next week. It's next week, next Thursday, episode eight. Yeah. Hope the, hope the tempo doesn't change because I don't want to change. You don't want to get out of this. All right. Now what you were gonna tell everybody about is this. What's that? I have four. Oh, the fact. That, oh, we're going uh, back to that. Never, <laughs> <laughs> never before seen Last Best Place. Uh, oh, yeah. that movie. That's the Last Best there. Place. That's gonna be shown there. I so. think that's what shot locally, wasn't it? It was very local. Local and, uh, Yoko. That's with Rocky that, Mountain Flesh Up. That is the bonus that's movie. The bonus film. The bonus you film. Can't see it anywhere else. Uh oh, cat's in the studio. Uh-oh. Turn off the candles. I just blew them out. Claude. Claude, pet away. Pet away. <laughs> that didn't sound great, but <laughs> enjoy the kitty. <laughs> Stay in character. G- Stay in character. GD came to pay us a visit. All right. Gordon Douglas. And folks, that's about it for the news. We're gonna get over there and tie some flies. That's us signing off. Uh, but I want you to know that for the prizes tonight, we have uh, some fly time material from shore fishing. Yeah. We have some uh, taco meat, taco guac, taco salsa from Morning View Mercantile, and we have a twenty-five dollar gift card from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. We have a fifty dollar gift card from Craft Beer Nation, and. I would like you to grab that sun shirt and show everybody the limited edition ed- edition sun shirt uh, that can only be one. That's kind of how it's going to go. I don't even think the guides have access to this shirt this year. They don't. There's not. You do, you do not have access. Look at that. It's probably the first time you've seen it in person. That is the first time. Yeah. And look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Did you invent that that camel I, coloring? I can't even tell you about that. The truth of the matter is that's called Bow River Squirmy Wormy Pattern. Okay? That one works as good as the Squirmy Wormy. Love people catch fish. That is a beautiful yeah, sunshine. So, uh, Limited. Yeah. For the flyingo tonight. Yeah, for the flyingo. And the last thing that we want to show you guys on this new scene. It's Western Canada Fly Fishing Guide School. Yeah. That is probably the greatest week of your life. Yeah. I have to say. That's that's for sure. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Every time I watch any of the videos, yeah. it's just, it brings you back to everything there, you know? I know. Just like all the transports you right into that place. That great place. You can feel all the happy yeah. water and wind and oh, yeah. everything. <laughs> Claude. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now your mic's on. Oh. I said pet the cat, Claude. <laughs> <laughs> so what I would like you guys to do is grab that charcuterie board and try some out. Let us know. Yeah, cl- and Gordon's probably but, in on some yeah. of that, too. No, he, he likes Ritz crackers, but... Uh, Look at this. Oh, yeah. GD is all over it. Out. Yeah. Look at him. He's like, yeah. <laughs> this is. <laughs> somebody screenshot this <laughs> and tag Friesen Brothers in it. <laughs> oh. I got to see if I can get a shot of that right now. Yeah. Oh, we're just, we're just creating a vibe. But you got to, you got to be in the, you got to be in the screen. 
I don't mind this blueberry session ale. I'm going to take back my first low grade shots and say that it's getting better. Maybe because I let it open up a little bit. Yeah, time know. to breathe. Time to, time to uh, breathe. Like, like a red wine. And time, yeah. time to. Uh, Two for one. Your I'm taste not much buds for, are getting used to it. I'm not much for it. a peach or like a fruity beer person, but I got to tell you, this, this peach cream ale is pretty dynamite. Get the cat down. It's gonna shut. Okay, you're out. you gotta tie some flies. Okay, here we go. We gotta put on some fly time music though. I will. All right. Okay, here we are. Um, now I'm new to this, so do we just like do we pull this mic out and then we're we're good on something else? Oh, there we go. Look at that. All right, so guys, we're going to start off with the Clouser Minnow here. This is Bob Clouser's. Um, great fly pattern. This is, if you were to put one streamer in a box and you were only allowed one streamer, this is the one that I would say, well, let's see if they that be in the Maybe same. this one is better yeah. that way. That way. There it is. There it is. So... This is the only thing I would put in my box. So um, this thing works everywhere. It works in all water types, rivers, still waters, the ocean. You can tie it from a size 10 to a one-aught. Um, really, really great pattern. So let's go into our season six kits. And let's grab our episode seven out. And we are going to grab our hook. You might need the blue bib. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> do, you think, do you think the red is contrasting too bad? Or do you think we'll we should see. go blue We'll bib? see. You'll know quickly because people will complain. Yeah. I got to take these shades off too so I can see what I'm doing. All right. So let's put our hook into place. There we are. What we're tying on here tonight, um, it's looking like... I didn't get the full specs on it, but it's I'll get them like... for you. Okay. I don't know. It's looking like maybe a size four. Yeah, like a three X. Three X long. Made okay, what you think? All right. So what I like to do to get this started off? So we got the hook in there. We're gonna start uh, our. Thread. It's a one aught. Is it a through eight? So I think we want okay. the size four, size two, or okay. size four. Yeah. yeah. And like a two long, three long, something like that? Yeah, must add 34007. And we chose not to do the salt water because we use this on uh, fresh water. Exactly. So um, I also like to use, I'll use nymph hooks that are two long and three long myself that are also like two strong. And those work good as streamer hooks as well if you can't find streamer hooks. The bib hooks. has been requested. Okay, the bib is on. <laughs> Tim hates it. What's that? The bib? There. <laughs> oh, look at that. All right, so we're going to start our thread. And I like to start um, about an eye length out. Getting that on. I don't like the way that started already. All right. And we're tying this in UTC 140. If you're using a uni, you could use a 6 aught. And um, if you're using a gel spun, I don't know, maybe like a 150. Uh, if you are using gel spun, remember that stuff is super slick. So you want right, to probably. Just the bib on you just looks like a. <laughs> <laughs> if you were using the gel spun. Uh, you might want to put down a layer of um, super glue when you're starting your thread off, and that way it'll sort of bind and get down, stick onto that shank. So now what I'm going to do is I like to just build up a little spot where I'm going to put my attach my eyes, and we're you we're making sure when you attach your eyes that you're you uh, leaving at least a eye. I maybe even eye and a half 
And that way, when your materials are going on, you're not going to crowd. So I'll lay my eyes down like that, get them started. You're getting props on your uh, fingernails. Oh, well, ready? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> They're I, ruthless. <laughs> I went and got I went and got manicured. I, let me I tell know. You yesterday. It's sitting in the bullpen. Like, I thought those things would have been 12 inches long. You know, and it was a good barber day too yesterday. Let me <laughs> tell you. So, all right. So I've started that on one side, and now I'm going to just cross wrap here on the other side. And we're going to put a few in, and then we're just going to double check that we got those right in place where we want them. And soon as we do that, now I'm going to do a series of figure eights to really bind those in. And then I'll do a few more cross wraps. And when I'm doing my cross wraps, I'm really pulling up to get that tight. And then once I got a series of those in, I like to do where you go underneath the eyes, but you're staying on top of the shank. And what that's gonna do is that's going to really gather and pinch everything all together to really secure those eyes on there. Come back on the back a little bit, a couple more on the front. And we'll just give those a feel. And those are solid. Now, you can super glue them if you want. Dip, dip. You can super glue them if you don't want. I, personally, I like to super glue. I, I would use res res resin. It looks better for the audience. Yeah. Or, or pretend to use resin so I, so I can put resin up. Well, don't worry. We'll get to resin later. <laughs> put a little underneath, a little dab on top, and those are locked in. All right, so we're gonna bring that thread back over this way, back behind the eyes, and now we're gonna go down the shank because when we're putting on bucktail, bucktail will slip and slide all around if we don't get this all covered up. And we're gonna come back right back to the point. And I wanna remember all our viewers tonight, at any point, if you're lagging behind, something's going on, SOS it. We can stop, take a break, let everyone catch up. Dan and I can have another sip of beer, and then uh, we'll get back to the show for you. Yeah, so there's an interesting thing that happens when you have to tie live. <laughs> are, are my hands in the wrong spot? No, you're doing you're doing oh. fantastic. I'm just I'm just letting everybody know that unless you've done it, you don't know what it takes to to be on camera. Like, it's like everything goes out the window. It's this like, is almost easier, though, than tying in front of the pub in front of everyone. Because yeah. there, it's got, like, you got a huge audience. And, and, <laughs> and, and Douglas is <laughs> Douglas is pawing in right now. <laughs> He's going to pull in the cord. <laughs> oh. Dude, I'm this. so glad you adopted that guy. He's amazing. The word is stole. We stole. Yeah. Okay, All right. back to this. Back we got to this. We, got, we, we got to got move. We got to move on with this. All right. So dumbbell eyes are secured. We've got the thread tied on. Uh, we brought the thread now in front of the eyes because we're going to put on our first uh, bit of material here. Now that being said, the first piece of material is going on is we're putting on the lightest one and we're putting it over top of these eyes because when this fly is riding in the water, it's going to be riding upside down because that's where the weight is. And typically on the fish, the lighter part of the body is on the belly, and then the darker is on the, on the back. So let's take our, oh, there we go. I got to get adjusted to the camera. There we are. Nice. Let's grab our bucktail. Now, some of you are going to have really nice long pieces of bucktail in there, and some other people, some of the stuff is a little bit shorter. And... The only way to really get this bucktail to you guys is to cut it off and we had to thread bind it, thread wrap it up here to clump it for you guys. And I find sometimes on the shorter pieces of bucktail and if we're not, and if we're using a longer hook, uh, it might not get the length that you're looking for. So if you want to risk it, you can cut that thread out that we've used to uh, tie that on and then um, that might get the length that you need. Uh, this piece, I'm lucky, it's going to be long enough to do this fly. So, all right. So when you're choosing bucktail, I like to start with maybe three quarters of a pencil width. 
So we'll just sort of peel that off. That looks pretty good right about there. And we're gonna give that a little snip. And when we're cleaning up our bucktail, we're gonna sort of pinch the ends, sort of bring everything together. And on the back side of it, we're gonna flick out and we're gonna pull out all those nice little guard hairs. And you'll find too, if you're using a, and as you're doing that, sometimes that's gonna slim down a little bit too much. So we can grab a little bit more off of that. that all together. And we'll just clean that up. Now let's just take that. That's all good. We got the guard hairs out. And we're going to measure that off. And we want that about uh, not a full, but I would say three quarters coming back there. So let's measure that off. We'll take a look how much we need to cut off the front here. And I like to sort of lay that down. Threads in front of those eyes. We can clean it up just. We're gonna do one loose gathering wrap because that's gonna you're gonna find that that's gonna really want to slip. Two loose, three loose, and now we're gonna really bind down into it. And then we're gonna bring that underneath. We're gonna capture all that material because we haven't let go of it. We're gonna do a couple there, and now we're gonna bring this all the way down to the body, right down to the hook point. So I'm gonna do nice, loose, open gathering wraps. Right to about there, and then we're gonna come back. Keeping with those open wraps. And then we're gonna bring that right under where we left off. And that's not bad right there. Do you approve of the tie-in music, or do you want something uh, different? You know what? This tie-in music's been great. Oh, okay. Well, it's rare that Tim compliments oh. me. Well, sometimes you're surprised by your bullpen. <laughs> All right. Now let's grab out our crystal flash that we have. And in this kit, we have the gold crystal flash. And all you need literally is one strand. If you want to put a little bit more in, you can put a little bit more in. But we're going to grab that. We're going to fold that over. And that's gonna make us two strands. We're gonna find the halfway point on those two strands, bring them underneath our fly line, bring that right up on top, and we're gonna lock that into place. And then what we wanna do is we wanna spread those two strands on either side of the hook. And once we got those on either side of the hook, we can really lock them into place. And now depending on how long those strands are, you can cut them off just a little bit past the tail. They don't need to be right in line and sometimes I even like my flash a little bit, just slightly a little bit longer than that. more securing wraps just to make sure it's good and we're coming down to our last piece of material everyone's following along good this is a really good simple fast uh yeah fast pattern very yeah. the minnows are easy to tie quick to tie and most importantly they catch fish they do catch fish all right so let's grab now our last material and that is our olive Bucktail. Same thing I, I again. Just a question. Yeah. There's a question. Yeah. On this fly, 
Is there any is there any point of this fly where you uh, just have to tie it in one direction? <laughs> oh, I don't know where you're going with this. <laughs> if you get a chance, just let me know. Well, technically everything flows in one direction. That's what makes you That's all I needed to know. That was it, eh? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you made my day. All right. Anytime we can bring you to one direction, I know that's a good good thing for you. All right, so here we go. Let's roll off another piece of our olive now. Three quarters of a pencil. Clip that off. What's nice about these patterns is you don't need to st be stacking hair. We kind of like the, that tail to be a little bit tapered. There we go, let's clean that all out. Let's flick out all those guard hairs. You can even hold that a little bit up, a little bit up higher, and you can gently go through there and pull out. That looks clean and good. We can measure that up again. And what's nice about these is, you know, thin flies, they do the trick. You can make them as thick and thin as you want, and that's, uh, you know, that'll determine uh, how fast you go through your material there. But when you do go buy all the other stuff, well, when you buy the material to do these yourselves, um, it's totally up to you. So let's just measure that out one more time. Make sure that's good. We're happy. That's going to do it about there. We're going to switch hands. Give her the little cut. And we're gonna make sure our thread's right behind the eyes again. Or sort, yeah, the, the dumbbell eyes. And let's do our loose wraps again to capture that. And then we can suck that right down. Suck it down. <laughs> suck it down. Suck it down, Aaron. And we can start to build that head of the fly. What kind of bobbin are you on. tying on? Tonight we are tying on the shore bobbin. And you know, this is, the first, yeah. this is the first time I've tied on this and that's a really smooth bobbin. <laughs> I know. It yeah. Is. Like I think I'm, yeah. uh, I'm pretty sure Rocky Mountain Fly Shop sells them, right? Yeah, 100%. I think I do. might be going to pay them a visit before I leave. Uh, Tomorrow? Yeah, to go back to the bullpen. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. You live in the bullpen. Yeah, that's permanently. That's my home. Yeah. Sometimes, but, you, but it's good to practice with one of those smooth, food and smooth. morning view mercantile makes it in yeah, there. Yeah, well, I, that's why you got the freeze dried like, goods. Yeah, and I have to like undehydrate it with beer, which is kind of great too. Yeah, yeah. So well, I think I think what's important is when you take the freeze dried goods in there. We don't know how long you're going to be in there till the next show, and so that stuff like it lasts a long time. Last and like if you time. if you win flango tonight, you're gonna have taco guac guaco, taco guaco <laughs> salsa. Okay, it's the whole kit for tacos, and uh, you're gonna be really happy for a long time back in there, right? Yeah. If you keep that up. Um, it's stuck. Oh, there we hand. go. There we go. No, we're good. We're good. Okay, guys. So that's it. We <laughs> got so, that on there. Just just wait. I'm just on you because it it looks like a dress. <laughs> It's beautiful. You know, when Sorry, you do the wide angle of the bib, it's not, that's not so sexy. <laughs> yeah, it's your bib. Okay, guys. So we've cleaned up the head of the fly here. We got a nice ramp. It's looking beautiful. Um, I've left my thread at the front of the eyes here. And when I do my whip finish, I, uh, I like to whip finish uh, coming back down. So we're gonna whip finish going down, probably like a five turn whip finish. And because we're gonna put, <laughs> I gotta wait. I gotta wait till the surrogate's back here. Because we're going to put resin. I'm coming. <laughs> resin on the top of the, on this fly to finish it off. Where is she? Oh, there she is. 
Miss Rosina. I was just going right there. She was getting the cat. <laughs> There's big things with the cat. It's going to come back. He he just loves us. He loves I, us. Well, here. he's a problem. Well. He climbs on things. and. All right. So my favorite resin for finishing this off is the Solar Res. Uh, as so is, you know, Tim's a big fan of that. Uh, there are lots of people a big fan of that. Um, if you don't have that, the Sally Hansen's. Go into the wives' um, um, pedicure kit. <laughs> you looked at me like I know what it's called. <laughs> well, I just. Anyways, <laughs> the wives' pedicure kit. Uh, any kind of UV thin would probably be good here uh, as well. But uh, this bone dry is probably where it's at. Just a nice little coating on that. Head cement. And that looks beautiful right yeah, there. Yeah, get that dap it a little dap will do you. So question was... And then let's torch it. <clears throat> uh, Corey said advantage to using straight eye versus down eye. Uh, a swim effect. So definitely, straight definitely. straight eye will follow your tippet uh, more direct. So down eye might jig down because as you pull it, it'll turn down. Uh, also, it the down eyes on smaller hooks, they can crowd uh, the eye of the hook. So something to think about in a in a good or a bad way. Definitely, I'm, you know, and I think with, with the, these kits that were that you know it was the down eye hook this time. I, I like them on streamers. Yeah, yeah. So there we are, guys. Clouser minnow. Clouser minnow. Round of should wait, I think I got applause on here. Oh, it's like the studio applause. All right, folks. Uh, well, there it from is. the bullpen, Mr. Aaron Novland, and I think that's uh, a pretty good job. Great fly. Love it. I fish it myself a ton. Yeah. And fantastic um, on the bow. And yeah. uh, just to mention, too, guys, yeah, even though we used white today, like you can sharpie that up to whatever color you want on the head. Yeah. And like then a finish red it off, or... too. Yeah. Um, and then another thing. Um, you know, usually, the I, I think the traditional was was the uh, the the thread of choice was whatever you're using for the undercolor, but I could be wrong. Yeah, well, you can give it some articulate like segmentation, adding a different color thread, like a red thread or or a green thread. Yeah, as it crosses the white bucktail. Yeah, I even know some guys. Um, depending on what color of eyes. They're yeah, using on their yeah, fly that they use. They use thread color to match the eyes. So yeah. yeah so I just want to say well done because I know Thanks. I know this isn't easy. And when you get in front of a camera and there's people, and there's there's you've been sitting waiting six years to get in all this. Yeah, and I wasn't even expecting yeah. a studio audience tonight either, yeah, right? You so, got the full gamut. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So because that was fun. You, because your dress is on, because you're in the flow, the ornacona flow. Well, this is coming off now for a bit, no? No, but I think what we should do because I kinda like the way it goes is yeah. um What do you wanna do? Music stopped. Freaks me out. Why don't why don't we just keep tying? You wanna just keep going? Well yeah, you're on a roll. Okay. And then what we'll do is uh everybody heads over and uh there you go. Get your bingo cards, because because the Crelix doesn't take long at all. No, it right? doesn't. So I think we can ham that out, and then if people are just here for the time, they can leave. If people are here for the all the free giveaways, then they can hang out and stay and play Fly and Go. And uh, then we can just kind of have some fun and roll with it after that. But okay. uh, since the bib and the dress is already on, and uh, everything is kind of set up for, okay. for that. Let's I hammer think, into it, then. I think... Uh, I think, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Is everybody ready? Uh, I think so. But first, before before we do this, how's your beer? Do we need to kind of talk about some beers? Uh, this one's still going pretty good, okay, but so are you ready? But I'm you trying a new one. beer, and it's called Straight Edge Pale Ale, and it is uh, from Sea Change. Oh, this is a non-alcoholic beer. I'm going to have to, I'm, I'll come back. I'll come back with another review. Do you see all kind, like... Lots of kind people out there. Thanks, guys. I just want to say that was that was fun tying that for you guys. So, thank you. Yeah, it's just it's really good. Well done. Thanks. I'm proud of you. <laughs> you 
You're going to bring a tear to my eye. <laughs> well, you almost brought a <laughs> widow maker to my boat. <laughs> We're not going to talk about we that. We don't talk about We'll no. talk about that later. That's gone. That's uh, not gone. No. Okay. That's because that, damn commercial, I gotta go that find damn commercial keeps reminding you of it. I got to <laughs> go find a beer that has some alcohol in it. Okay. And I'm going to tie this Crelux? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you do that. Right. I might interrupt you at one point and uh, give a review. Yeah, that works. We can get this Crelux started, though. Okay, guys. Um, if everyone's ready to go into their next kit, um, hopefully you've got some of the materials all worked out. Like we said, that Crelux material, that's part of my language, but it's a bitch to pack. And it is a bitch coming out. So let's again, here's what we're tying. Drop that one off. Let's grab the hook that we're using out of that pack. And we'll just set that up. Make sure it's nice and straight. There we go. All right, UTC-70 again. A lot of the same of the techniques that we just used. And uh, for this one, uh, again, Eye lengths back, eye and a half back to start your thread. I like starting it that far back because like I said before, then I'm already starting to get proportions into my mind and I'm not gonna go too far with my eyes, my dumbbell eyes, I should say, to crowd the eye. I believe it was Ron said that he takes the dumbbell, uh, so the dumbbell length from the eye of the hook yeah. and that's kind of the distance to which Kind of like that way? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I guess so. Or you could line your scissors up on it and then like put your scissors. That worked too, yeah. All right. Now I'm back in the scene because I yeah. found one. Oh, it's another point five. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> Why do we have non alcoholies in here tonight? Tim. Oh. That is a long drive. All right, so we're gonna start putting on our eyes again. Couple of wrap, wraps one side, just to position it. And couple of wraps on the other side. And let's get those eyes done. I always like to like look right down to make sure they're centered. Okay, and once we're happy with that, let's do our series of figure eights. Some more X's, and there's no rhyme reason to this. It's just like go and whatever feels comfortable. All right. Well, you're uh, talking about your X's there. <laughs> I found, I found one. Have you ever got one. sat and done the count of the X's? It's yeah. None. And, and I was, waited for Janine. Oh, you're the yeah. I'm that that's guy. the you're the golden uh, child. Wait, Valentine's <laughs> Day yesterday. All right, so I'm trying to Wayne Gretzky Pilsner, dry and crisp, from Wayne Gretzky 99. If you know who Wayne Gretzky is, put it in the comments. If you don't, like Tim, uh, throw your favorite basketball player in the comments. An open, honest review after I have went through four non-alcoholic beers. You finally found the one. Found the one. The great one. Yes. All right, so let's feel those eyes. Oh, yeah, they're not moving. They're good. Once again... I do like to secure them because there's nothing worse than after a few fish or casting this all day that your eyes and all your material starts rotating. Yeah. Again. Uh, and, to be honest, one of my favorite patterns on the Bow River. This one? Oh, uh, this one's a good one. If, if, I, if I could just do this, if, I, if you gave me two flies, and it's probably almost always what I have set up on streamer rigs, is a Crelix trailed by... Uh, a different fly. Now, do you ever trail a Crelix? I always wanted to ask you that yourself. Two would, Crelix? No, or? like, would you, like, your point fly be something bigger, heavier, and then would you have yeah. a Crelix on behind that? Do you ever do that? No. No? And the reason I put the Crelix in the front is I put, like, a non-weighted leech or something in the back. Oh, uh, so you Because get flowy, when you flowy. strip on the Crelix, it'll dive when you let go. Yeah. Because of the weight. And then there's just like a pulsation in that Crelix material. Yeah. And uh, gosh, is it a 
effective. And effective. Okay, about to try this. I just poured a lot ahead because first time here. They actually say you should pour that, you know? I, I was just going to say that. I, I watched that it think. somewhere. Yeah. Because you're keeping all of, like, the carbon dioxide inside the drink instead yeah. of releasing it and then the flavor and the, all the things. Yeah, and then they took, like, this napkin and dipped it in to see what, to show you what your stomach would actually do. And that's, like, what your food's doing. So it's, like, good to actually have a little more head. <laughs> 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 right? Who's going to argue with that? I can't hear for sure, but I think that was Claude agrees. Head is best. Um, it's it's very pla- like very plain, yeah, very simple, easy to drink. Uh, there's kind of a bit of a like Coors Light is too plain. This has another level up, right? But still very mild. Very mild. Good. Good. I mean, easy to drink. Uh, in the craft beer world, maybe a little too, like, wah, wah. Like, easy. A little too easy. But, like, let's say in, like, the people that like those um, light pilsners or yeah, for sure. those lager people, like, that's that's right up their alley. Oh, it's so easy to drink. and Yeah. One more. Okay, back to the Cree looks, guys. Um, some of your kits are going to have two different materials. Some of them are going to come with this nice gold and the green. And some of the other ones come with like a pearl Wait, flash. wait, 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 wait. Look who's in the comments. Who's in the comments? Starts with a D and ends with an AD. Oh, starts with a D and ends with an AD? Yeah, dad. Oh, dad. Gotcha. <laughs> Dad from South Africa in the house. And He's he watching. He showed up as he always does. All right, make him proud, Aaron. Look, and he, Dad's already cutting into Tim too. Hey, about the nails. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> well, he he did raise such a feminine esque person, I guess. Well, <laughs> hey, uh, how far behind do you trail the other fly? I would say about. Wow, 20 inches to, 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 about this far, I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go much more than like. Yeah, because it's going to be harder to get to the banks. But I you're think... also going to see when you don't go far enough, they don't move independently enough. Speaking of independently Would you enough, say two feet is probably the max you want when you're running a tandem? I don't know. What's two feet? I don't know. 24 inches. <laughs> fish yeah but <laughs> i don't know yeah. Eight, 18 to something yeah uh, i don't really measure but uh i want to talk to you about how i would tie these together after you're done tying we get through this okay guys so we're going to start with our first material which is going on top because that's going over the eyes and that's going to ride on the bottom and that's our say our lighter color if you got the golden green kit, then we want the gold right now. If you've got the stuff that's got the pearl stuff with the gold, then I would go pearl now and then gold to finish it off. So let's grab our stuff. We got a nice little bunch here. Again, it's kind of like three quarter pencil, almost pencil. Um, and we're gonna probably pull off about Cut off a five inch section of this and then we'll trim what we need to trim from there. I can't wait to see what five inches it, is. Well, yeah. So let's take a quick little measure with our material because that's what we want our tail length to be. Almost again, these are really long hooks actually on this. Um, so maybe not a full, maybe just about. A third because... Yeah, it's great, great, great analogy. Um, the longer the hook, and if you got the longer the tail, you got more chance for a short strike from a from a fish, which means they're just going to be nipping at your material and you're not getting that. So yeah. unless you're tying a stinger on um, or unless you're going for those beasts that are going to inhale this yeah, every single time, then I would say you most you want to be back is like three quarters on about this. there about yeah. there that yeah. looks great and and you're gonna learn that as you tie more flies people you're not always going off of exact measurements it's a feel thing it's like that feels right yeah. because you fished it and you know 
Uh, nothing makes a better fly tire than uh, somebody who fishes the flies they tie. Yeah, exactly. All right. Okay, Paul wants to know how many stacks of dimes is five inches. We should ask Ken, but he's not here. He's at the Flames game. Which way are we stacking the dimes? That's a good question. Well, you know, like you got to like details. That's right. How thick are the <laughs> dimes? Okay, guys, so let's measure that off. Right now, your thread is sitting behind the eyes, and that's where we want to tie this in. Unlike with the uh, bucktail, we were tying in everything at the front with this pattern. Um, and the, the way we've chosen to tie this pattern is we start there. So we've got a good little measurement right there. We're going to lock those in. So they're locked in. Now we need to bring this back down again. So we're gonna hold that up in up motion because we don't want this. You know what, that's a little bit too long. So we're gonna cut that off. That's just being annoying. Let's make sure we got ourselves enough room now. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna hold that up. And that way when we're doing our nice open thread wraps again, that just lays down the top of that shank and it's very not wrapping similar, around. Very similar to what? Very similar to the last fly that wow, we did with the bucktail. Wow, we put them together. Wow, look at all the, 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 the same techniques from dumbbell eyes to yeah. body wrapping, right? Same thing, we're coming back up with nice big open wraps and what I like about the big open wraps on this material is the stuff still shines through and it gives some flash to your body. Okay, we're gonna bring that right there. And now I'm gonna bring my thread out in front of the eyes. We're gonna bring this Creelix material down. And we're gonna take one loose gathering wrap, two loose gathering wraps. And then we can pull and tighten that up a little bit. We're gonna come back in behind the eyes, which is lock this all down. And now we're gonna fold this forward. And we're gonna bind it down again, right behind the eyes. And now what we've just created here, we'll do, I don't know, a few wraps. What we've created here is well, that was kind of our tail and now we're creating the body. And if you pull that body section right up, what you wanna do is you wanna snip it off to about where the barb is. And now that's got a nice tapered body going plus there into the tail. The, the better part about this material versus like bucktail is that you can cut this at the back and you're not looking for that natural taper that you're kind of getting out of some bucktail. That's right. Just trim that up just a little bit. So there we are. Now to finish this off, we're gonna bring this back out over to the front and I'm gonna come down just a little bit towards the eyes. And we're gonna flip that under because now we gotta do our next color, the darker color. So same thing again, let's grab some of our material. As much as you want, as less as you want. What's nice about this one is we're gonna fold this one right over on itself. So it's actually gonna kinda thicken it out a little bit. And we're gonna cut off another five inch second of those width. This stuff was <laughs> finicky. I might take a little bit more just to thicken that up just a little bit. There we go. There we go. Ends are all nice together. Let's cut off our bit. Now let's take that. Find the halfway point, bring it underneath our thread. 
We're gonna tie that. We're gonna lock it in. We're gonna bring that all pinching backwards. And then we're gonna start building up our head here in a nice ramp. take your the green we just put on and we're gonna gather and group that all together and we're making that cut exactly to the same spot where the fold over was on our lighter material here so just on the body so we're not bringing this out to the tail we're bringing it back to that kind of that barb point give it a little snip wow and it's also my favorite color combo this green, one? Green and gold, yeah. I like that brown one, too. Black and purple's good, but I, I like this one, personally. That brown and gold one? You know, the dark brown? Yeah, yeah. That one, Copper. Too? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this material, you know, it really starts to get nice, sleek, and flowy, because it's uh, totally unnatural. Um, when it gets wet, it actually will start to... So if you have a few stragglers, don't worry about it too much. A little bit of moisture on that will bring it right down. So now we've... Uh, Tied that all in. We've cleaned up our head pretty much here. I might do just a couple more just to cover that all up. I'm gonna bring it back up top. Once again, I like to do my whip finish turns, finishing down towards the eye. Five turn. Nice tight, that's good. Snipper off. And we'll take our Resina again. Wait. Yeah, yeah. Wait. Where? Put it on. Hurry. Oh, there we go. So like we said, our Solar Res, UV Thin, Sally Hansen's, Head Cement, it all works. Flash it with the torch. And there we are, guys. Two beautiful streamers that'll oh, catch a buddy, fish. Oh, buddy, you did it. Unbelievable. Wow, eh? Oh, yeah, buddy. There it is. Beautiful. Love it. That'll fish. Will it? I hope so. <laughs> we'll find out this but spring. But we do have a funny story. But first of all, we would like to uh, take this moment, hang out with us for one second. We'd like to say thanks to our sponsors. And then we're going to come right back. And what's on the docket? Well, we're going to play some Fly Angles, so make sure you get your cards. It's always weird when I'm not in the scene and I'm talking. Yeah, why aren't you in that I'm scene? I'm trying to find it, okay? I don't know where it is. It's over here. Is it over there? Is it... I don't know. I don't know. I could get into this one, but you have your dress on, oh, so it makes the bib. me weird. The bibby. Uh, we're going to come back. We're going to play Flyingo. And, uh, Give away some prizes. You can switch your mics, because I love your other one better. I do, too. There we go. I feel that. Are we back? just made everybody's ears happy. Yasmer. Okay, we're going to come back. Great job, Aaron. The comments, I'm just going to let you read them. And you're going to read them as we say thanks to our awesome sponsors. Thanks, Chazzy. Thanks, Risco. Thanks yeah. to Manchinton. Thanks. In the heart of nature, when hunger strikes and time is of the essence, Morning View Mercantile has the solution. Witness how we redefine convenience. It's not just a meal. It's an experience. In mere moments, a feast emerges. Delight in the flavors of the wilderness. Morning View Mercantile, your partner in adventure, your ally in taste. For every adventure, a memorable meal. Morning View Mercantile, where every bite is an expedition. Being up in up in the high the high Rockies or up in that area, the just the different species, right? 
Um, still looking to get a rookie under the belt. Still looking to get a, a bull under the under the belt. But uh, you know the fish the fish are amazing, um, and just the the landscape is is second to none. There we are. We've survived. We've arrived. We've thrived. But most likely, we've derived from... We a, jived. And jived. I'm, Tim never has a rap for me, but it is moonshine. Raspberry lemonade. That'll give you a rap. I thought I had some like really upbeat music, and I ended up having nothing. I don't know how you do it with all those buttons over there. Claude. Claude. <laughs> Tell us a tell us a joke. Tim loves when I do that to him. You put the jokes joke on the joke telling onto someone. Let me just check and see if anything came up. As a joke? <laughs> yeah, as a joke. No, I like the no joke. Jokes. I like the joke that Dave Rutherford sent out that said hashtag Tim Who. Well done, Aaron. Hey, but I learned from the best, and that's been watching six seasons of Tim. So that's, I give him credit. You know, so accolades. Yeah, yes. So. He's my boy. Mm. He ties him up. He showed how it's done all these years, and you just you just learn. You get learned. Yeah, you get taught. You get learned. And that's what's amazing about TNL is uh, season after season. It's just about learning, and yeah. and you tie your best. And I'll tell you what. I how many fish have eaten ugly flies for you? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Given the fact that I've tied all the ones, <laughs> all of them, all of them. Like fish eat ugly flies. So even if it doesn't turn out that and what chicks, you think is great on the vice. And chicks date ugly guys. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that goes for all of us, right? With all the oogs, maybe. I'm trying to think of another rhyme and I'm stumped. Yeah. yeah. All right. Not every day is a rap day for me. <laughs> Having said that, that's a wrap on my jokes. Well, folks, you've tied the Creelix minnow. You've tied the Clouser minnow. And like Eric Augustin said, he tied them both tonight. Great job, Eric. Thank you. Great job. That was yeah. fun. It was fun showcasing so, those two to everyone. There's another fine lady in the house that also said, good job. Yes. The lovely, C the thinking, lovely CB. I was thinking some hearts would have followed that, but uh, maybe you're not there yet. That's okay. Work maybe in progress. You're not there. Work in progress. Great job, Aaron. Uh, and yeah, so uh, because I need to ask them, we don't have a tire next week. So if you guys think Aaron did a great job and you would like to see him back next week, uh, let us know in the comments because uh, it's all about you guys. And, uh, oh, there's a round of applause coming from the casting. Yeah, the casting, not the casting coach casting. brought that on. Then it's not the casting coach. That's <laughs> never been agreed upon. <laughs> It's been it's been insinuated, but we've never actually brought that to light until now. Oh, thanks to the Booze Brothers Moonshine. We had a flub up, and uh, that's going to be deleted quickly. So to recap, I have an OnlyFans account where I tie flies with my feet, and Friend Diesel is the only subscriber, and we have a casting coach to foot now ties. here in the studio. 
And if you don't know what that is, don't Google it. This uh, this business model is really starting to grow that you got going on here, you know? <laughs> Which one? Well, there's a lot. That's going <laughs> on now. I know. I know. We might actually make it here, Harry. <laughs> it's <laughs> happening. Let me tell you. Uh, bring them back. So the bullpen showed out tonight, and that's a fact. So speaking of Scooter Tabor, the Rod conversation is going to happen after we play Flying Go. Right? We're going to do that. We're also going to hear from Morning View Mercantile, and they're going to tell us a little bit about who, where, what, why, and when Morning View Mercantile. We're going to get a bit of the backstory. We also have choosing a fly rod topic. So I just that's what I just said. Yeah, uh, right after this, I only have one good ear. You know, that's okay. I got one good eye, so you can't hear, I can't see. You almost make a whole person between you. We almost do. Yeah, yeah, we do. (laughs) And uh, I won't take any more jokes deep there. Roll of dimes. All right, where is the bingo game? Right here. Get your bingo cards ready, folks. The bingo. Here we go. That's the first four calls. As always, we get those off really quick because nobody wins right away. So we got the clouser, the wine. Wow. You can see the couch is playing. The couch the is PB allowed Caddis. to play. The couch is allowed to play. The couch is in play. And Western Lady Hopper. But you guys need to know that tonight it's four corners. All four corners. Four and corners. No Here we go. And ors or buts. It's just four corners. Remember what to do when you win. You say bingo. And then you say your card number. Your card ID number. So bingo ID number, whatever it is, and then which call number that you got your bingo on. Those are very important, and those help us. See, look, Encore, everybody wants you back. Everybody, just your dad. I just, Just I I feel love. Sorry, that was just your dad wants you back. Oh, just dad, yeah. Okay, well, Well, that counts for something. It counts for a lot, you know? Yeah. I know my dad wants me on the oars lots. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, you're rowing for him. Claude always wants me on the paddle. In oh. the canoe. <laughs> Whoa! Is that like uh, is that like on the double bike where whoever wants the other person to pedal more gets put on the front and then the other one in the back is just it's like a little there for like the ride? that. Is it that? It's is a that little like that. Yeah. Claude just likes to sit in the front and fish while I paddle in the back. Oh, That's, well, he's yeah. he's evolved into a very intelligent human. <laughs> you should you should though. You don't. Your speed that you're paddling at is so imperative to that trolling. Yeah, you are. You are. Like you are. Actually, for, you're I at, am you're, the most important person you are, you're in the, the boat. One, you're the one yeah. that's catching the fish. Actually, this is absolutely yeah, true because it's your speed. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Uh, Troy Tracy wants to know why did the jelly bean go back to school? Well, I don't know why the jelly bean. But what's the answer, Troy? We don't know. Well, wait. He want, oh, he wanted to be a smarty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we scroll back up, too, I think there was another joke by Elaine. Something about a blonde. I have the ability to do that. Yeah? Okay, Can so... Can we go back and looky, looky? Oh, she Bad gave the answer Doug. right there. Why did the blonde... Well, it's Doug. He uses his wife's face. Oh, okay. Hat. Why did the blonde bring a ladder on the bus? Because she wanted to go to high school. <laughs> Two school jokes all in one. Wow, we got Want Want right out of here. So we got Copper John, Intruder Leech, Western Lady Hopper, the Pewter Baug, Caddis Wine Booby, and the Clouser Minute, which we tied tonight. That's right. And uh, we got six. Got to head back to these comments, get them refreshed. See if there's a bingo yet. Uh, I got a joke for tonight. All right. What did the trout say when he swam upstream? This feels normal. Damn. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. Well, anyways, that's how we're going, folks. I know this one might take a while. But Eric Augustin got your joke a little slow. Rainbow Dart. Rainbow Dart is call number seven. Number seven. And, uh, yeah, so if you're just joining us, I highly encourage you to get a bingo card because it's not too late. 
Uh, the website's up there. You can go get a free bingo card. Sign up today. It costs you nothing, and all you do is win. So Sometimes. that's either a legitimate question from Eric, or his card just sucks yeah, tonight. He just sucks. <laughs> At least your flies were good, Aaron, because your jokes aren't. I added that. Parentheses. Well, we're not. Maybe I do have a Netflix special coming out. You never know. What, what's it called? Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? Fear and Loathing in Olds. Huh. Olds, Alberta. Canada. All right, number seven. Is anybody getting anything on this, or are we just going to be here forever? I don't know. Four Corners is a tough one. That is. Your it's- special is called Tie One On with Double A Ron. Oh, Whoa. wow. There we go. Tie there. One On with Double A Ron. Tie One On with Double A Ron. That's my motto for the boat now. Yeah, yeah, but should there's be, no. Should but, get a big sticker. Yeah, but, and we're tying, but we're tying on. Kate's flies. bringing you back. You got to vote from your girlfriend and your dad. There we go. <laughs> we're gonna, well, we're gonna a, need one stranger to say yes. I'm surprised we still got viewers. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bingo card 19. So I need to know, Paul. What call? Oh, bingo, bingo. Here we go. Call eight. There he goes. He got it all together. Uh, okay, so enough. you've got to watch to see if other people are, are running because okay, I've got I'm to on check you. in on. You check and I'm calls. looking. We got call eight. No so far, man. so far, call calls eight. the guy. That is correct. No one a four else. corner winner right there. Boom, boom. Ah, beer and floating in the bow. Wow. Paul, could floating. you be the lucky winner? Oh, Ron got a four corner, but on what call? He got the four center. Oh, that's the center. That's just <laughs> you got to get used to the bad jokes when you're behind this camera. Yeah. Here. You know, I knew I needed glasses, but now that just confirmed that I needed yeah. glasses. Yeah. Yeah. Center All corner, right. same thing. All right. All right, Chaz isn't. He's a bit more stranger than your dad and your girlfriend. Uh, Robin Rhodes, the new guest, just finished tying the Clouser. Good well job. Done. Hopefully well done. Robin's playing bingo with us, flying go, because there's a lot of stuff to give away. $50 to Craft Beer Nation, $25 to Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, uh, some 2 millimeter foam from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, and some materials from Shore Fishing, and a very special... Uh, Fly Fishing Board Royal Fitter Sun shirt Not released But yet Only way to win it Is to win it Special special Man, The only way to get it Is to win it And don't forget Your taco salsa guaco From Morning View Mercantile Trail tacos Check 99 Why would I check 99 Eric's full time jokester All I know is Like that candy Is my favorite On a mountain Or in the boat The mer- mercantile Freeze dry candy. It's the best. Yeah, 099 is not good. Yeah, Robin, uh, post a photo, tag us in it, let us know. Uh, Gotta check out early Joel Satherwood. We appreciate you, brother. You and Alicia. Thanks, Love Joel. You yeah. Love you. So Scott Lorenz says, damn, and I'm wondering if he's just getting your joke. Are we that? Are we lagging that bad? No, we're not. Oh, okay. Here we go. It's time for the doors of doom to meet your maker. But the truth is, the wizard's not here. No. Don't see him. I don't see him. Do you see him? You know. I don't see him. I don't see him. But too bad Paul didn't have a Captain Clutch sticker because he would have been immune to the whiz from the ways of the wizard. Still. Like nine to choose from. So Shaggy1958 says we're tying flies. Well, what I can show you there, Shaggy, is this. That's a vice. We already tied the flies. And now we're giving away over $150 worth of fly tying stuff. So if you like giveaways and you like to be rewarded for just showing up, I highly encourage you to hang around because... We tied the Clouser minnow, and we tied the Creelix minnow. minnow. 
And now we're just giving away stuff. So we're playing a little bit of what we call Fly Ingo. It is a take on bingo and it's totally free. You could just go get a bingo card uh, over at our website and uh, we just we just play. So Paul D is the winner. What you gonna pick, Paul? Come on. Uh, and I believe Paul won. One through nine. I believe he did. I actually believe he did. He's got a Captain Clutch sticker. I, I gotta double check, but I believe there was a couple people who bought them preseason. Ooh, this and could be game changer. This this is just what it is. It is. There's a limited edition sun shirt going out tonight. And that's a fact. Captain Clutch immunity sticker was purchased by Paul D. Rocker. Dun, dun, dun. And so folks, just like that. It's over. Oh, uh, that's it. That's it. So essentially. Do we even, do we even entertain what Paul might have picked? Or, yeah, 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 actually we should. That's a great right. point, Aaron. What's the number, Paul? Is, Just throw uh, it out there and we'll go fast. Let us know. But you do win. You win all the stuff. Yeah. And, I'm, and that makes me happy because that's two weeks in a row that we've got bonafide winners. Yeah, exactly. So let us know, Paul. Let us know what you pick. The three weeks in a row. No. No? Two. Wasn't there a float trip one? Yeah. Well, that okay. that was a secondary prize. Oh, I got yes. you. Okay. Cool. Give me a six. Well, there we Paul, go. Let's see what six has. <laughs> it might be better than all the prizes because sometimes <laughs> that's how I do it. Uh, we'll open door number six. And door number six was... 50% off a guided trip. Well, thank God for the clutch. Over. So your boat, you're, you probably would have got a little more well, with this, maybe. but uh, either way. The sun shirt's a beauty. I like. You are a winner. And every year when you release sun shirts, like they are a must have. Yeah. Can't wait to get my sun shirt this year. I know. Well, without much further ado, what we're going to do, what we're going to do is Good job, come Holly. back to here. And the couch cam, and that's, folks, is Morning View Mercantile, a big part of the giveaways this year, a uh, big sponsor for Thursday Night Live, Fly Tying. So we're going to just kind of turn it over to you guys to just talk a little bit about what your company is, what you do, uh, and how they can find you. Well, that's interesting. I said to Claude, you want to talk? And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can <could> right. make him. <laughs> <laughs> we could make him. Well, what did you say? What we do? Where we are? So... We, you can find us in a few places. One is Gasoline Alley Farmer's Market, just south of Red Deer, in the county of Red Deer. Another is at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, where you can find our products. And we do freeze drying. So we have everything from fruit and vegetables, things for your pantry, things for your camping trip or your fly fishing trip. Um, Candy, of course, because it seems like candy is what most people know about freeze drying. Oh, the candy. Oh, the candy. Yes. Claude's going to retire on Skittles. <laughs> Pardon me. Rainbow bursts. Rainbow oh, yes. Bursts. There's a difference. Yes. I, I will say that I'm a, I'm my favorite. Peaches, peaches. It's peaches. For, for my me, favorite. like uh, the, the mangoes. The mangoes. Are better than candy for me. Yeah. And your kids fight over the apples. The apples. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a fact. Like, yeah. The healthy ones. It's well, true. It's, it, they're not, they don't taste healthy. They, I mean. No, I know, they, but they are the healthy ones. Yeah. So, yeah. They are. They, but you're right. They don't taste, it's like grown up gummy bears. It's like grown up candy, yeah. right? It's good stuff for you, but so tasty. We have. So we have a friend at the market where we are at the market. He's got the booth next door and Claude's been friends with him since high school. And Leo teases us all the time about being Skittle dealers <laughs> <Factual>. <laughs> because people come in and they're like, I need my Skittles. Where are the Skittles? Yeah. <laughs> so that happens a lot. But it all started because we are canoe campers and we love to go on our canoe trips and we always dehydrated our food and dehydrated food if you've had it, is difficult to rehydrate sometimes. So things that you really want to be eating for supper, like things with ground beef in them, pardon me, gravel. are kind of gravelly when you eat them when they're dehydrated. But when you freeze dry it, it almost instantly comes back so that you can't tell that it was ever freeze dried. It literally comes back to life. It really does. Yeah, it comes yeah. right back to life. It's Someone asked me the other day if it was cryogenics, <laughs> and it's not, but... There's no chemicals involved. It's a natural process that's just aided by the use of a freeze dryer. So, hmm. 
Yeah. And like we did last year, and we're going to do it again this year, but last year we did uh, a taco night. And yeah. uh, it was our first time, just to kind of like our beer reviews, is we had not had uh, the tacos, the guacos, <laughs> the salsa, which Paul's won tonight. So he's going to get to try that. Uh, it was almost too easy. Like I almost screwed it up because it was too easy. I thought it was going to be more complicated. And the guacamole came back to be almost better than fresh and the salsa yep. the same and it actually shocked me because i had i tried the candy but i hadn't tried uh the meals like that and it's like you said it's just like it's actually back to life into the fact of it it tastes like you just cooked it and, and i so. missed out on that night and i watched that night and i was like ooh, that's awesome but other than candy like my first insta meal was top of the, the mountain. Top of the mountain. The, the chili. The chili. chili yeah. Yeah. And I tell you what, I was I hoovered that. Yeah, <laughs> you did. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know if it was the the thousand <laughs> meters of elevation <laughs> that it, it, that, that helped increase that hoovering. Uh, you know what? Need. I but will you know tell what? you that that was the best meal I've had on top of a mountain in a long time. I'll elevation definitely does. Um, boost my cooking skills <laughs> it, <laughs> it is true yeah <laughs> when you're in the bush or when you're out and about and you're getting a hot meal that tastes homemade yeah. like it tastes even better than it does at home right no doubt about it yeah it's a uh, interesting thing that i find climbing is like it's almost like the 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 candies the candies are for sure but the mangoes something about climbing and maybe the exertion or the elevation but things are so sweet. Like oh. if something in your in your tongue goes down and it's just like it's next level and I almost can't eat the candies, but the mangoes for me are just like super awesome. It's true though, the freeze dryer when it when things are freeze dried and the moisture's removed, it all that's left are the flavor crystals. That's what Claude likes to say. Because yeah. it really boosts the flavor of things. It does. Mm -hmm. that, and I, I think that's where I'm getting at with it, is just like intensifies. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, yeah, super cool. Um, anything else you want to say about Morning View Mercantile? Well, you know what? No, except that we're really so blessed to be a part of this whole community and this show. And it's been, it's been a huge blessing for our business, but it's just for personally ourselves. We just enjoy it so much. We love being a part of things. And if we never saw a single sale from it, we would still be a sponsor because we just love to be able to give back to this community in some way. And so thank you all for, you know, taking us into the family fold, I guess. And Well, we're blessed to have you. So thank well, yeah. you. Thanks, Aaron. Seriously. Thanks. Uh, you know, it's, you guys have been here like pretty much since the beginning. I mean, Aaron's literally been here <laughs> since the beginning. Um, but just to kind of see the the relationship evolve, and I remember the phone call. I remember exactly where I was. I was in Penhold uh, at the sports complex there when when you guys called and you were so excited talking about this new business venture that you were doing. And there was like this apprehension, but this excitement and this we don't know where this is going to go. We don't know um, we don't know the next steps, but we we kind of know you know like a little bit what we want to do. And a big part of that, what you wanted to do was, you know, be a part of TNL fam in a way to get back, to keep it moving forward. And I, and I never forget that conversation and just kind of where it's led today. And, and that's the TNL fam. And there's so many people in here uh, who show up every single night and we talk about it probably ad nauseum, but it's, it's without you guys, without everybody who shows up every single night, I mean, we're just hanging out time flies telling bad jokes to ourselves so it's uh it, it, the full circleness of it is is really cool and we're blessed to have you guys as friends and as family um the better part is that the food is incredible Unreal. And, and i encourage everybody yes you bought a kit you got your skittles or berry bursts what they're called um but to try more of the stuff and you can get it all at rocky mountain fly shop is is where they sell the stuff online and if you want it in person then you would have to go uh to gasoline alley and i to be honest i think it tastes better if you come and buy it on if4 and old night there you that's go that's a good point right? that's a good yeah. point it yeah. does well I, that's where it tastes the yeah, best i can encourage people or challenge people um to try to 
like empty empty the shop. Yeah. yeah. Clean it out. Hashtag Good plan. empty the shop. Empty the and, shop. Yeah. And uh yeah. So I will tell I wanted to say one more thing for those of you who haven't tried our meals. Um I want to let you know that they are very lightly seasoned and that is 100% on purpose. We don't go heavy on salt and we don't go heavy on spice because so many of the commercial freeze-dried meals are really really heavy on sodium. And those are easy things to add when you're out in the bush or you're yeah. out on a fishing trip. They're impossible to take away. So I I know hikers need more sodium <laughs> because they're exerting a lot, but you should have the choice of how much you add. So if you get your meals and you think that they're under seasoned, that's 100% on purpose. Yeah, and that's a great point and that's an intentionality in in making them knowing you can always add salt but you can't take it away. And Rick yeah. asked, can we get them in the US? You can cuz you just order them from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop and they'll yeah. ship them to you. Uh, I think it's over $49 in shippings for free. So you're actually saving your gas on going to a store if you order from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Chaz likes the pulled pork. I yes. do too, Chaz. That's one of my faves. The Korean barbecue. The Korean beef. The yep. beef yeah. That's another favorite. Yep. Love that. Yep. <clears throat> and there, we have more meals coming out. And that's another thing we should tell you is that for those of you who are around the Red Deer area, um, we have a booth at the Sportsman Show this year, which is new for us. So, Which weekend is that? It is the first weekend of March, March 1st. Nice. And yeah, come, come say hi, come introduce yourself because we have so many new friends from this whole family, Yeah. but we haven't met so many of you in person. So we'd love to. We got lovers of everything up there. <coughs> Ice cream sandwiches is getting a few. I know a lot uh, of comments, you know, I, the, the ginger ones at Christmas were like, we ate them and I was just like, I can't, how damn, I can't <laughs> stop eating these things. Keep up coming. Um, yeah, I gotta be careful because the strawberry milkshake ones are a huge hit of a lot of people. What were the ones that you pulled out today, earlier today when we were getting set up? The purpley ones. Oh, we did the peach penguins. Those oh, aren't, the peach those penguins. aren't for sale yet. Those are just on oh, trial. Not, oh. not yet. I, I, not yet. I opened my mouth too much. But things, yeah. no, you never know what might come around. We're always open to suggestions, and Dana suggested peach penguins because they're his yeah. favorite. So. Yeah. So you never know. Blue but whales. Blue whales. We do those. Oh, you do those we already. Do those. Well, there yep. we go. See? Well, sharks. Candy. They're the ones with the white yeah, bellies, yeah. right? The sharks. But still. What still, I do suggest. Peaches. I'm all about the peaches. Well, we're, fuzzy well peaches. we just made me hungry is um, if that charcuterie board makes its way around. <laughs> to, the <laughs> to the backstage. Yeah. To the backstage. And the joy. You need a hand there? Got it. Just be careful because those crackers are slippery and they keep landing in Claude's lap. So mm, sure they do. Yeah. Cheese and meat. Mm. It's very, very good. I'm surprised there's any left for you too, because Claude has been chowing down on it. Well, that's why it's here. It's to that's be good. Eaten. Hmm. All right. So, all right. Where do we go? Where do we go from here, What's folks? What's next on the evening? <laughs> <laughs> Where are we freeze driving now? Well, first. <laughs> I keep talking to Burger. Burger King? You mean Burger King, Eric? <laughs> Eat the lap crackers. Uh, Shaggy, so, um, yeah, we play bingo. I can kind of show you what it looks like. Who's um, got the beer, Shaggy? Oh, yeah, the rods. Bags got us right. Oh, yeah, we got to talk about rod. Rod buying. So in, in, in for a new rod. That came up on, on the, on the uh, TNL chat page. Midweek. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's let's go through your process when you're getting a new rod. You gotta change your name because you're gonna. Oh, that's okay. I can be Tim tonight. No, technically I am. Yeah. <laughs> well, the good news and the bad news. You're Tim. I'm Tim now. <laughs> because okay. okay, 
Tim, I guess you're staying in New Zealand because Tim, there's already a Tim here. Yeah, because yeah. Tim, Tim's here. Yeah. Sorry, Tim. Shaggy, Tim one, bingo Tim two. card. Yes. So we tie two flies every night. We play flamingo, and um, we call we call the numbers. Um, it's a program, and it does it. And if you win, you got to go to the doors of doom, and you got to pick a door. And uh, behind the doors are different prizes. Sometimes uh, they're not so great, and sometimes they're fantastic. So, um, and then we drink beer, and we do beer reviews. And uh, there's the beer. Kind of coming to the end of the show. It's about a two-hour show, and. Uh, Craft Beer Nation supplies our beer, Friesen Brothers. Thank you, Mr. Rutherford. This uh, is a real treat tonight, as always. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to talk about fly rods, and we're going to talk about what's a good fly rod. And the first question that I ask, and I hope I hope Scooter's still here. I hope you guys don't have like a weird thing about people eating and microphones. Take your headphones off. <laughs> it's that, uh, yeah, it's... No, I think it's good. Well, it's I'm that, good. the asthma culture. Everyone's into it anyways. Um, fly rod. So the first thing you need to know is, what is your budget? <clears throat> I don't care what is going on in the fly rod world. You need to have a budget. Because rods are more often than not based around price point. So better if rods cost more, eh, probably, but the rod for you might not cost more. You know what I'm saying? Cause there's rods that are designed for certain things such as salt water. There's rods that are, they promise you super accurate casts. Well, here's how I look at it. You're going to spend $1,500, $2,000 on an expensive fly rod. I highly encourage you to spend that money or that time or something in learning how to cast a fly rod because a really good angler can take a hundred dollar rod and fish all day long and be extremely successful. Does that make sense? But let's, let's compare them to golf clubs. So there's a sweet spot. So on a golf club, you know, you got a big head, a big driver and Probably the cheaper drivers, the sweet spot's kind of like more on the entire thing, okay? But it's never going to really get you to that next level because the sweet spot's spread out. On a more expensive golf club, that sweet spot's really small. And so what happens there is if you hit the sweet spot, you're going to have a great drive and it's going to feel really good. But if you don't hit the sweet spot... You're going to be like me and you're going to be playing five fairways over there um, because your slice or your hook's going to come into play. More often than not, if you're trying to get your score down, what are you going to do? You're going to go for the bigger sweet spot. You're going to go for the rod that compensates for probably um, my incompetent swing. Does that make sense? you hear what I'm saying? Yep. If you get better or when you get better then you can start to fine tune yourself onto a rod that has probably a little less forgiving on the casting, but at that level, it can probably more often than not uh, be more consistent. Right. And then there comes yeah. into actions. Talk to me about actions. Well, I don't know. Like you got fast actions, you got medium actions, and then I don't know the slower action rods. Um, and I guess it really comes down to your casting style. Um, myself, I really enjoy fast, fast action rods. Um, that's sort of where I'm comfortable with my uh, with my arm movement and everything like and that. The, and the way you cast. And the way I cast. Um, are fast actions just as accurate as slower actions or medium? Yeah, like it's all it's all in there, but it's all about your technique and your your style on your cast. I think. Um, if there's an action that's more to you, maybe you're a little bit slower with your arm movement or you, you enjoy timing a little bit more then maybe you want a little bit slower rod. Um, there's, there's, really, there's more feel in the slower is, rods. And so is. what do rod actions mean? Uh, it's just kind of how the rod loads. So 
uh, a fast action rod is probably stiffer, and then and then what they used to call like a tip flex. Yeah, right. That would be a fast action. Would be a tip flex. Slower one kind of feels and bends more down on the hand. Yeah, like more of a mid flex or down <clears throat> a little bit further. Yeah. yeah. So the market is oversaturated, and it is. It is literally for marketing. So there's a company I used to work with, and what they're going to do is they're going to take their top fly rod, they're going to make a new top fly rod, but like, I don't know how you improve something that's that's pretty good. So the fractional improvements are going to be felt by very few people. Uh, but they they need to sell more rods, right? Because they're in the business of selling rods. Then they're going to take their old good rod and they're going to. Uh, rebrand it and put it as their middle rod so they're going to keep selling that rod they're just going to rebrand it and they're going to sell more so just be careful of uh marketing because it's genius and they spend millions and millions of dollars on on marketing and it and it catches us and i know somebody commented about the new orvis rod i have not touched it i have not fished it the video the, looks really cool. Like, did you see that thing go bend all the way back to the butt of the rod, pretty much, like from tip to butt, and it hasn't blown up yet? It's, but, I mean, it looks cool. But, like, have you blown up a rod mm. other than the tip or, like, some, you know, no, garage door opener? I've never fully blown up a rod. Yeah. So now you're going fishing for tarpon. Well, now rods make a big a bit of a difference. Yeah. You're going to go fishing on the salt water where it is, like, hit 70 yards and hit it now. Fast, stiff. Um, lighter materials or stronger materials are more expensive materials. Um, yeah, John's service cut out during bingo. Oh. So the other thing is to understand is like, uh, so some, some rods are made in America. And what, what does that mean? It means that the quality control is, is a lot higher. It also means that there's some value to the warranty in that fly rod. So if you break a rod, some companies, you just go down and pick out of a bin uh, a section number three because it is what it is. Well, those rods continually fall apart because their manufacturing is like the margin of error is very large comparative to more of the high end rods because the quality control, the the construction, making things in America costs more because your, your quality, uh, your cost of labor is way more. But you can probably get a bit a better quality rod. So the other thing people around here say a lot, and just want to touch on it a little bit before we kind of close out, unless yeah. you got some more things. But it's like people say, go with TFO because they have a lifetime warranty, and they're right in Calgary. And if you break something, you can just go get it fixed. It, or you don't get it fixed, or you just get a new piece. It is easy. It's easy, but I'm telling you what. Um, where Orvis has come with their warranty and their margin of error is down to a tenth of a piece of paper. Think about that. They do so make the, it real easy. The too. sizing of their ferrules is so, so, so accurate that they feel comfortable sending you out one without having you send the whole rod back. So that's pretty cool. But it's like I used to use TFO all the time and the TFO makes some great rods. I'm not negating their rods. I'm telling you, the flaw that people say about, well, they have warranty and you can just go down there and replace it. That do that doesn't mean anything to me. Because Orvis now, you can literally uh, fill out a service request and you pay your fee and you get a new piece. And it usually shows up in like a couple weeks, a week. Yeah, like... Actually, you know, a lot of the, the high-end rod builders have warranty and... But for turnaround time, there's a lot of play ones that are getting better and better at it. So, which might negate maybe some of those ones that you went to before. So, yeah, it opens up your options, right? And um, I forgot who posed the question earlier in the week. I was flipping through it and I saw it and I was like, yeah, this would be a great co topic scooter. for tonight. Oh, it was Scooter. Okay. Yeah. Um, scooter, here's like your answer from us is it's like, you come up with a number in your head. This is the price that I would like to maybe max out at and go try a whole bunch of different rods. Uh, a lot yeah. of the fly shops will let you throw them in the in the back alley or out on the road or whatever or have something in mind on what, what action you like or what brand maybe that you believe in yeah. that, that uh, 
that delivers and 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 that's your that's your rod so yeah <clears throat> so it's almost an impossible question to answer and i know uh you can do a million tests on these rods and this one's strong and this one's you still get defective rods like the like it is what it is you still get defective rods and somebody gets a defective rod and they go all over the instagram and the social medias and the google and they rip on the company and it's like i don't know i don't know it's it's honestly a million dollar question that i don't know how to answer other than take your budget and learn learn to cast yeah learn to cast are you going on a small stream maybe you want an eight foot six three weight uh, we have some streams that are smaller, but they're very windy. So I use a five weight because that helps me punch through the wind. Am I going to fish delicate dry flies? Then I'm going to probably go to a four weight softer rod because it's really fun. And it's fun to catch those fish and fight those fish on that rod. Um, on the bow, you're fishing on a boat. I've, my favorite rod is an H3. And I think it casts extremely accurate and it's quick. It's quick on the drift boat because you're going. You don't have time you got to hit the spot and I find it to be very accurate for people who know what they're doing. Um, but for people who don't know what they're doing, it is what it is. So I guess I'm going to leave it at this. Um, spend your money on learning to cast and then every rod is, is great. There we go. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. No, I don't either. Words. Yeah. Okay. Favorite part of the night, folks. It's the nine win, ten. Win, win. We went a little farther past the nine o'clock than we thought but win win night oh sorry i got you guys zoomed in on your crotch of ruse <laughs> that was the crotch shot <laughs> the crotch <-a. laughs> all right so the winds what are winds what's your camera doing it's drunk <laughs> it's flexing on you Mine is? Yeah, look. Oh, yeah, it is. Look, it, doesn't, it, doesn't it doesn't know, know what where to, to focus. Do with you. It doesn't know. You're confusing it. There's too much reflection. It's too much. That's yeah. what's happening. Yeah, the flash. Too much flash All right. Wins stand for what's important now. What's important. So we share because sharing is caring. And so kind of what we do here every single night at the end of the show, after we've tied a couple flies, we've given away some prizes, we've told dumb stories, really bad jokes, we've shared a bit of news, and... Um, some other things happen we don't know about but it's just how it goes yeah every night's different that's usually how it goes and uh so this point is the is my favorite part of the night there's a lot of hearts that come out in this part of the night yeah a lot of hearts yeah and so we share because it's important to have a space to just share what's going on now what's important now uh it can be something fantastic it can be something pending on your heart uh, whatever, just share with us. Share with us what's what's important now. What matters? What is your win of the week? Um, so then what we do is we share as a group with you guys, and then we're going to put your comments on the screen, and we're going to read them, and we're going to stick around until you guys are done sharing your wins. Uh, and that's just kind of how we finish out the show every single week here. So uh, without much further ado, I said yeah. that about 12 times today. I know, right? That's your favorite word. Yeah. Today it is. Yeah. Every time. It's all the time. I know it always changes, but there's always one that kind of yeah, sticks through. Sticks. All right. Yeah. You're up first. Am I rocking always. and rolling? You. So we go, you couch me. There we go. And then, uh, and then we'll then go talk we'll about the crowd. Them. We'll start sharing. Sounds good. Uh, so I've had a couple of wins. We're going to start with a, an easy win. Well, not an easy win, but like tonight. Tonight's my Tonight's win. Tonight's a fantastic win. Tonight's a huge win. Um, known these guys since uh, the fall of 2018. Um, met them there from season one, episode one. Yeah. And um, sometimes, like people, just become your people. And um, it was it was really good for me at that time to to meet to meet some people that wanted to bring you into your community yeah you or you had, had to time earn, or life. you had to earn a spot in your community <laughs> but <laughs> anyway well you just yeah. had to be a spot and you had to be a spot to to be a spot that's like right you just yeah. yeah uh but it's uh it's moved into a beautiful relationship um friendship and and here we are and i got to i've, I've seen this from the infancy to where we are now and to be sitting behind this desk tonight in front of all of you 
who I'm usually on that side as well. Uh, this is huge, huge, huge win for me. So that's awesome. And thank you very much for the opportunity. And 100%. thanks for the Thursday Night Live family for just being who you are. You guys are unreal. It's awesome. I'm there as many weeks as I can be there to uh, work, work, you know, work related. If uh -huh. I could, if I got that night off or that. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Uh, another win for me would say that uh, this has been a tough grind in winter. Um, it's been very work focused yeah. to to obtain goals that are wanted for the upcoming season, spring, summer, fall, I would say. And uh, there hasn't been a lot of hiking, climbing, outdoor fun time. It's been sort of nose to the grindstone. And the last couple of weeks, I've had time to finally say, you know what? Let's go enjoy the outdoors. And, uh, and I've had uh, Kate there to to do that with and uh, we kind of both been grinding and the getting in that mindset where you're like working hard or you're doing something you're like oh I don't have any free time or I haven't been able to do this or I haven't been to do this but know that everything is for a common goal or a goal that you want to reach and sometimes you just gotta bite down and get into it and then if that reward comes a little bit later on or that that day to actually just you have then go out and enjoy that day and uh be in that day and um with your like your most intent be in the moment like be in the moment yeah. and enjoy it and lap it up um because um, I know you and me have talked and we're like, dude, we haven't climbed. We haven't done anything. And it's like, what's going like, but we're just pushing through other stuff right now. Yeah. You know, and sometimes you make those sacrifices to push through, yeah, but, when, but when you, you do, but when you do get that time to enjoy, really embrace it and enjoy it. So I've had a few times to really enjoy or enjoy and embrace those free days to do that but i've also learned changed my mindset to embrace the grind for what i'm trying to get to later Beautiful. in the season here too so those are yeah. the two wins for me well done colleen claude claude wants to go first <laughs> <laughs> i can so honestly say that my win is the same win i've had every day for about a dozen years and she's sitting right beside me Oh. <laughs> she honestly is my best friend and I love every moment I'm with her it's beautiful that is amazing and it's and I know I I I see it yeah that's sweet all thank you all night on the couch <laughs> tonight I've seen it <laughs> yeah <laughs> newly wet game could not be might, might not be over yet yeah. it might not be over yet <laughs> questions came up well <laughs> And honestly, I think my win is very similar because never in my wildest dreams did I think I would find someone that I actually wanted to spend every minute of every day with. And the fact that we now get to work together every day. And I don't know a lot of couples that can do that. They can pull that off, you know, work together every single day, day in, day out, and still want to be together. So that's definitely a big win for me. And our business is starting to really show some gains and that's huge too. And just in the past week, we have a new wholesale client and a few things going on with that. So that's all huge, huge wins this week. Awesome. Claps to that. Yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful. I hope Janine's not watching because I always feel like I got to shout her out. But uh, no, that's beautiful. I think... You know, watching you guys and just the energy and somebody wrote in one of their wins, which we're going to read, but it's like they just felt the the vibrations. Um, yeah, I just I just think there's so much power to to the good people and there's no cliches about it. It's just the fact of the TNL family and I just get to be a part of it. And that's super awesome. And, you know, what you guys just said there is like. It's not, it's not cheesy and it's not saying it because camera. It's like, I 
yeah, I see it. And and that's pretty awesome. So my win is uh, last night we were spending the beautiful Valentine's Day at Costco <laughs> with a sampler of rigatoni <laughs> and orange juice with Tropicana. <laughs> That's why I take Janine for Valentine's Day. No, but uh, as we were going to Costco, we had volleyball. And uh, I was like, I have not met Dave Rutherford, Craft Beer Nation. It might sound weird as the sponsor of the show, uh, but I had not met him. And so I wanted to stop in because I, I, I wanted to give him a hug. And so and I walked in there and I was like, I'm a hug hugger. And he said, me too. And our beards got in, entangled, intertwined. And it was a bromance. Did it make a heart? It did. It was a beard heart? <laughs> it swooned. Our beards swooned together. And uh, yeah, it was a beautiful moment. Dave, you're a fantastic human. Uh, I think you could tell so much, and I'm, and I'm not getting weird here. Um, you by definitely some, send the tasties. By somebody's... Uh, by somebody's eyes and there's just a lot of compassion and care and I I know that you talked about Thursday Night Live and what it's done for your business and the community and the morals um, but the reason it works is because it, it's also you and I just wanted you to know that um, yeah I just I just think there's so much good inside of you and I was just very honored to get to meet you last night and for that that is my my win of the week beautiful so now, <coughs> I gotta wear a diaper more often. Yeah, I'm not wearing one right now. Are the I'm beers? Are the beers? The, the beers are running saying, through me too right I'm now. I'm just saying in the future. <laughs> TMI. <laughs> yeah. If Tim was here, he could hook up the catheter. I know. Yeah. Well, I'd actually just make him fill up a cup and run it to the bathroom. Well, there we go, Tim. Okay. Sage's warranty has got. Sage is terrible for warranty. Um, okay, Paul T. Looks like the first one. My so, win uh, is... Aaron Couch Dana. All right. So Actually, we'll go Colleen Claude Dana. Paul's win is I was fortunate enough to win Flying Go. Makes me really appreciate what effort goes into this production. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. And we're happy that you won Flying Go. We are. Colleen... Oh, uh, that's not <laughs> that's not a win, but it is a win if you remember that your fly line deeply impacts your fly rod. <laughs> okay, here's a win. Okay, Chaz. Watching my brother, Double A Ron, step up to the plate and crush it. Super awesome to watch your friends do the thing. Love this community and every single person here. I appreciate you all. OQP, LPCF. Thanks, Chazzy. Yeah. Claude. Dean. My win. Morning View for being great sponsors and Aaron for taking the time to teach me a new fly. Thank you for everything. Yes, yes Dean. And thank you. Bags. Uh, we are week two into having our new puppy. And he is one very awesome pup. Very tiring, but very nice to have a dog back in our home. Wait till you wait till it's fishing season with the pup. Yeah. New new person Robin. There we go. Robin Rhodes. My win. Being blessed with a great community to be a part of. The energy in here tonight has been great. My spirit was lifted. Many thanks. Right back at you, Robin. Amen to that. Yeah. Glad you're here. Yeah. Colleen. Adrian. Huge win. Had an awesome date night at dinner at Regrub and the City and Color Concert. Work is going good. I feel like I had a huge win last week fighting all the cravings. It disappeared. <laughs> Grinding it's also hard. Up here, yeah, I can see it there now. Grinding hard with work and projects. Families doing great. Helped a cousin with some stuff and realized how lucky I am. LPCF, OQP, much love, love for all the TNL fam. Yeah, man. Yeah, sometimes you got to add letters and words to people's I know, right? things. <laughs> Claude. Mike, spending the weekend with my good fishing buddies at Guadalupe River Trout Unlimited Trout Fest this weekend. I think that's in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Our Texas chapter is the largest TU chapter in the USA. Wow. 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 
Ah, uh, Mr. Pape. My win is getting to watch TNL from the West Coast and see Aaron do a great job out of the bullpen. Appreciate Back it. Appreciate it. East Thank Coast you. Tomorrow. Appreciate it. Thank you. Can my win be super simple of making it home and having to consume my seventh hour of driving today? John, yes. keep on trucking, man. AC blowing, music blaring. Get home. I don't think the AC's blown. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Call in. <laughs> Mike took our boys out for some skating lessons tonight. Seeing them building their skills and confidence while having so much fun brought me a lot of joy. Can't wait to get back on the ice together soon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Chloe. Claude. Ah, Dave. Good friend Dave here. Thank you for the beer. Uh, finally getting a bear hug from Dana and Wise and meeting Janine yesterday. And a visit from Colin from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop with a replacement Bob. It's so good. Yeah. Get back to tying flies. Yeah. He blew one of the uh, yeah. uh, bobbins the there. Ceramic from, tip. So, yeah. That's a beauty, Dave. Yeah. Thanks Dave's for the a great taste. guy. Thanks for the tasties tonight, too, Dave. Uh, Josh, great win to share. My buddy that ended up in the hospital was accepted for his surgery earlier this week and came out okay. He's on this side of the grass for the time being and grateful for it. Where are we at here? Tamara? Tamara. Tamara, sorry. Uh, I am a 4-H outdoor life project leader. My win this week is looking forward to taking the members and their families on an ice fishing trip this weekend uh, to a local lake. A few of the members have never fished in, in their life, so looking forward to sharing a new experience with them. It's always about sharing the experience, and that's awesome, and that's what, sort of, that's what always fills my heart on the river with people is uh, sharing a new experience too. Yeah. Trevor McPhee, I think my win is getting down to Bentley to see my parents with my wife this week and chase some slew sharks while I haven't made my way down in a while and we're looking forward to seeing them. Oh, those slew sharks. Claude. Oh. Uh, Roger, my win, I've been, I've had a banging headache all afternoon. Tylenol didn't help, a nap did nothing for it, but at least I was able to forget about the couple hours this evening by tuning into TNL. And with that, I'll be saying good night, going to head to bed, and try to sleep it through. Well, hope you're feeling better here, Roger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> usually, usually that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you're going with it. Yeah. Right? You were like it the, stops me from banging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you that at the end of the night, the headaches are about to start. <laughs> uh, Shaggy, welcome. My first time viewer. Uh, late to the party, I'll rewind and watch the Clouser tie, one of my favorite flies. I like them tied with PB hair. PB hair. What's PB hair? Peanut butter. Personal best, pubic hair. That's where my mind went right away. And that's just Shaggy. Right. Also, remember that uh, probably in three minutes, there will we will call a quick tie. So, if you subscribe to this channel, you'll see a um, another video come out uh, about the Clouser, and it's none of this stuff. It's just the tie in like you had requested earlier. A wrong. Brucey. Bruce Cole win. Had a pretty tough week. A uh, few weeks, but things are starting to settle out. That's good to hear. Starting to plan time on the water. We always love when you're here. Well, ready to uh, start planning time on the water, buddy. Uh, booked in some boat trips. Awesome. And uh, brighter days ahead. Always brighter days ahead there, uh, Brucey. Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. I get to read Brent's. <laughs> All right, Brent, my friend. Your win. My kids asking if we are floating this year with the FFBR boys. Yeah, I'm right, you are. And be able to make that happen. Looking forward to making memories in July. Good job. Woo. Claude. Mike, my win is thinking back to the first time I fished with Aaron. Quinn was talking about low expectations and we kept pulling fish into the boat. Uh. <laughs> 
That's just what happens when in our kid, boat sometimes. Kid. This is what happens. Hey, look at this. It's time for me to read Mr. Hepworth's. My win, although being away from you guys is tough, I'm super grateful for this much needed holiday with my family. It's been so good to reconnect and enjoy in the adventures. Love you all and see you soon. We love you too, Tim. Love you too, buddy. See you in a month. Yep. Aaron. Huh, Mr. Augustine, my win for this week. Uh, they cut off. I can't even make that one out. Uh, they cut my hours this week. Well, I was ready hours. to quit, but yeah. not letting the devil win. I love what I do and the customers. <laughs> now I need to focus on actually start guiding. I've been blessed with people having uh, helped me learn more about the rivers I fish and help my poor casting habits. Second win is talking to my girls. Uh, talking to my girls, Paula, every day. I hope to see her this weekend. She is perfect for me. I love my TNL fam. Yeah, you read the next one. All right, I got the next one. I got Jonesy here. That's why, that's why I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for thanks for covering. All right. Uh, big win from Jonesy. Watching a great pal and even a better person in some amazing flies tonight. Oh, thanks, man. Like, oh, like the love is just being felt tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it, Jonesy. Maybe maybe we'll see you in here one day, man. You never, you maybe, never know. Maybe we'll be hanging out. I don't want to give away surprises, but the, you never know. The bullpen together. <laughs> Anyways, thanks, Jonesy. Can't wait. <sighs> Barry, the mayor. Barry, the mayor. Just being a part of such a great community. Thank you, TNL family. Great job tonight, everyone. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks to the mayor. And Barry, what are you doing in Stetler, of all places? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have... Travis. Tra um, Travis. Travis, sorry. My win is to get to watch the show on the YouTube since I wasn't able to get on till now. Tim, have a great time. Yes. Uh, Ryan's having a winning week on my reno. Haven't got to spin the bugs with y'all, but I love listening in. Makes drywall work easy peasy. Thanks for another good Thursday, TNL fam. Oh, perfect timing, hey? Oh, look at that. Well, planned. I know, all planned right out. All right, from Caitlin Bessler. My win, long weekend ahead. Exciting new ventures coming up. Also, you did well. Thanks, babe. Yep. Hands, yellow heart, red. Happy you guys had fun tonight, and we're glad you had think, fun tonight. I think it's an emoji that it, it's like. <laughs> can you make, can you do that emoji right now? What is, do it all at once in one motion. There it is. That was awesome. Love it. <laughs> yeah, so did she. And that's it. I am an emoji. Colleen. You are a bigger than life emoji. <laughs> that's true. All right, Terry. My win this week was sitting on Buck Lake with my brother, BSing and waiting for a fish to swim by. Some good BS helping us get past the early loss of our brother in law. Very sorry to hear that, Terry. Yeah. Much needed time. Well, I think we read them all. That's the wins for the... That's the wins. That's the group. That's As fast that's the as night. we try to go, we can't get out of here under two and a half hours. No. We're right. pretty close, though, this time. Like, we're only two minutes over. Yeah, well, two yeah. hours was the goal a couple right. years ago. Yeah. And I always ask myself, how would we get to two hours? Now I'm asking myself, how would we get to two hours? But going the other way. <laughs> Sometimes, right. I, sometimes I feel like it's how are we going to stay under three? I don't care. It's <laughs> our show. Exactly. We don't like it. See you next week. Done deal. All right. See you next Thursday. Yeah. All right. I'm hydrated because I had my prime. I'm yeah. drunk because I had my moonshine. You got quite the table going on over there right now. Let me tell you. <laughs> Look it over there. And it's like, shit, maybe you're sleeping in here too. <laughs> I'm happy because you did some good tying. Thank you. I'm still rhyming. Lying, but anyways. Yeah, you like, might guys, be. You might be lying. Guys, I'm a four out of ten <laughs> on my skill set tonight. Ah, uh, that's what we do. Happy to be here. Love you guys. Thanks yeah. for the opportunity, TNL. And um, yeah, you're stuck with me next week. Sorry. Yeah. Well, they voted yeah. you back. Well, so nobody kinda, voted you out. So no. I guess that's just how we gotta go. It's like Survivor. My torch did not get put out. Claude, Colleen, any last minute remarks? Well, I was just thinking about the rhyming. 
And now that you're done tying, we should head to tracks and you're buying. Oh. Ooh. Do, do. <laughs> I didn't want to admit this, but I think you're lying. Tracks is closed, I think. They're done. <laughs> If you look at the door, you might see the cat spying. <laughs> no, but I do see his claws come through there every once in a while. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Well, Judy, thank you very much. 100 out of 10 in our hearts. Yes, I know. 16 in uh, the program, one in your hearts. Thanks, guys. That's what I always You're signed awesome. in hockey. It didn't get me anywhere, but I did it. Until next time. We'll see you later. I'm Dana. That's Aaron. I'm Aaron. That's Colleen. And that's Claude. And we are your TNL people tonight. See you later. Gotta go. Bye. Love ya. I can feel my body. You fold against the concrete. But I can't seem to get enough. My mind is fixed on what it wants. I just let you beat me. Look at me deceiving. Let you get the best of me. In bed with my worst enemy. This is a no pro. I just can take hold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me home. This is a no pro. I just can take hold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me home. So put your hand in mine. Follow me. Let me waste your time. Set up the do some stupid shit. Take a seat. Let me waste your time. So be top of time. Take home.